Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated. So Stu and Heidi, how y'all doing? Hi. How do I say your last name? Stu? Heidi Rodewald? Rodewald. Rodewald. Thanks for asking. Rodewald. Sweet. What's your last name? Stewart. Stewart? Yeah. Stu yeah. Stewart? Yeah, I mean, my real name is Mark Stewart and uh, oh. you might know... That other Mark Stewart. Is that a famous musician? He has been famous in certain circles. Yeah. yeah. Bristol guy, band called The Pop Group. Oh, okay. I didn't, and so, I didn't know of him. Yeah, everybody was called me Stu in fifth grade, so I just decided to take that since he already had Mark Stewart. Yeah, Stu Stewart. But you go by just Stu, right? Or? No, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of into Stu Stewart now. The share thing The share thing has kind of seen its... Uh, better days you know i like, right? I yeah. like stew stew like john john stew, so. <laughs> yeah heidi rodewald yeah that's german or? yeah rodewald. that's a ger- burnt forest that's burnt. as german as it fucking gets yeah. burnt forest <laughs> burnt forest that's what it that's what it stands yeah, for that's what is that true i thought what it was a- cut down the forest or no red i thought forest. it was burnt forest like you know oh, like really? that oh. burnt forest. Stu is the expert no Stu's i mean I, that's what i thought i don't know for sure that's what i thought I'm that's what i thought about i like it that's what I, yeah that's what <laughs> i heard you're a fan of your last name yeah I like it because when we go there, everybody th- really thinks I'm German. Yeah. Well, when you got Heidi you know? and then Rodewald, I mean, Heidi. it doesn't really. Except that more. Heidi only only ladies that are like you know 85 years old <laughs> are named Heidi there. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yeah, it's, it's not, not a name really that everyone Heidi's. wants right now. Well, how y'all doing? What are you up to? Oh shit, man! I don't know. I'm you don't know every fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Can we? Yeah. Yeah, you could curse. Um, you could curse. You could smoke. You could just drink. Just. <laughs> Um, making shows, doing shows, doing a series of monthly shows at Joe's Pub. I saw the I saw the last one. I think. Okay, cool, cool. It was wonderful. We had fun. Oh, you came. I Good. did. I was wondering. We had yeah. fun. Cool. We had fun. Yeah. Oh, you were at the last one. I don't know what the last one was. No, no, I don't not- think you were at the last one because a friend of mine who's a huge fan of yours was at the l- Total Bent one. Was it Total Bent? Oh, Do you man. remember what? I can't what tell. We, I can't was, tell. It was the date where I was flying to Europe, and I could like September seventh, maybe. Okay, we can't mention that in this podcast because they will kill me. Oh. Right. They're big fan of yours. If they would have known you were there, they'd have been like, "What the fuck?" I was kind of hiding in the back. Good. Yeah. Bad, actually. <laughs> good and bad. bad. I mean, bad. Good because if they had seen you and then known I now know you they would have been pissed off at me yeah so you know I'm supposed you know you're supposed to introduce everybody to everybody yeah. right yeah, it used to be like that it wasn't dude. that kind of affair though at Joe's pub it didn't seem like it right yeah. it was great it's the first my first experience with y'all I hadn't uh, oh that's a weird fucking oh, wow. that's a, yeah, yeah that's weird a, cause that's like a, one of the weirdest it, shows it was a weird like, entrance yeah right, right 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 yeah we keep saying which show because they're all so completely different really you know yeah, yeah. you guys reinvented all the time yeah, it's really fun. I love having a completely different band and playing a whole different set every time. Yeah, we were doing that yeah. since um, the old days. Yeah. Because in the Silver Lake days, if you were playing Spaceland, uh-huh. and everybody was going up and playing their nine songs and getting really like military, you know. Yeah. Like I can remember when X literally played, this is before us, you know but like long before us but these la bands would go up and like military they would just play the same nine songs and they get great at those nine songs Mm -hmm. but that was like it you know i know you know what i'm talking about right yeah and then we were like okay everybody's playing their best nine tunes and what if we just like show up one day and well play all george harrison covers well you know you know we you started that kind well, of stuff? well, we well no that. what yeah, we started yeah. doing was was <laughs> it was because that that uh that clause what is that exclusivity clause where you're supposed to not yeah, play yeah. and so we started doing shows under another name yeah and doing yeah, like yeah. all madonna or all yeah, michael really? jackson yeah. or yeah so isn't that the, a lot of work though to learn those songs or is are you a genius at that like some people can just hear a song you got play three it. chords yeah we didn't do anything complicated 
Yeah. You Even know? that's hard, though, with that, like the memory of the lyrics, all that. Or I know, you, man. I'll read some fucking lyrics read, on stage in a too. minute. Are you yeah. kidding? Me too. I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> I've been doing that for a while. Yeah. I'll read some lyrics on stage in a minute. Nah, it was just like the excitement and scene of how if we would fall apart and yeah. just the joy that people would get from like, literally, I remember, and it wasn't social media days. Yeah. So we weren't telling everybody, yo, we're playing all George Harrison. Mm -hmm. But people would just show up on that Saturday night and... And suddenly it would be all George Harrison, and people would get a thrill out of that, and they would talk about it, you know, instead of the same nine songs all the time, you know. Right. And we did versus nights. We did a, uh, um, what was it like, Van Halen versus the Smiths. The Smiths. That's, yeah. And then like, I would have liked to have seen Van that Halen. show. Van who who kicked, won? Oh, Van Halen kicked their ass, of course. <laughs> really? <laughs> ah, that's so great. <laughs> I mean, that's, we kind of intended it that way, funny. but that's another story. <laughs> These days, I feel very justified in, in uh, given what's been going on with Homie. Uh, I feel very justified. But Check yeah. it, my friend just made me a design for my new tour T-shirt. Uh -huh. Here it is. Oh, oh my God, that's, that's great! Nice. That's cool. <laughs> that's, <J> <laughs> that's, <good. laughs> that's cool. No, it lives. So man. we we kind of we're, we're going ahead and going forward with this. Hell yeah, we'll it see lives. what happens. Uh, I it, lives. Nice. it lives. It lives. <laughs> Maybe David really will reach out to you. Right, right, right. Let's right. hope so. Guess a little duet action. <laughs> yeah, there was lots of uh, Jesus material going on in the show. I saw. Yeah, it's because it's from a show. It's from a show about a. It's from a show about a, a singer who's loosely based on like, Michael Jackson, Brian Wilson, and like, just all those like troubled singers whose dads, beat them up. Uh huh. You know. I don't know what you're talking about at all. Next subject. Next subject. Can you continue that while I lay in the fetal position right here? Because uh, I'm, I'm feeling it's getting a little bright in here right now. Sad. Anyway, uh, uh, so yeah, the new record. Um, <laughs> I do have an album called The Ballad of Boogie Christ, too. You do? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, the, yeah. there we go then. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it was just all about, you know, the dad and the son and this whole, they were raised, both raised in the church. Mm -hmm. And so there was just like getting all those demons out, you know. Yeah. The first big show we did, Passing Strange, was basically about the relationship between this kid and his mom. Yeah. And everyone was like, where's the dad, you know? And I'm like, okay, so <clears throat> this time we made one. It's it's a brutal kind of show in a way, you know. It's a lot of, you know, it's it's. I mean, not vi visually brutal, but the stuff that goes on. Does you it know? have a name? It's called the Total Bent, mm -hmm. and the soundtrack is out, and it's a whole bunch of cool songs sung by me, Heidi, Vondi Curtis Hall, um, the amazing David Kale, and uh, Atu Blankson Wood, uh, all these cool singers. And people with fantastic names. Yeah, right. They all got good names. Better names than Stu. <laughs> well, I don't know, Stu. I like your name. It's working. Thank you. Thank you. But thank so, you. Um, and Passing Strange went to Broadway. Is there intentions of this thing going to Broadway, or is it? Oh no, Total Bent. Total Bent did its run at uh, at the Public, uh -huh. and then that was it for that. But it gets performed all over the place now. It's starting to get performed a lot. Yeah. But yeah, we just did our thing at the Public Theater. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and then we were done. And I heard you say in an interview about Passing Strange about how um, the problem with musicals is they lead with the narrative and the rock so and the songs are just in support of the narrative, whereas you're coming from it from the angle of the songs are just as, if not more important than the narrative or that they lead the narrative. And I found yeah. that to be incredibly inspiring because I'm trying to think about a way that I could put something, I, I do sort of concepty things sometimes. Yeah. And, how would I convert something like that into a musical? Like, right. And it seems like if you lead with the songs as the most important part, yeah, that's actually like I don't know, like for for rock musicians, that seems like a way into to getting totally. into musical writing, and you seem to have cracked that code. So yeah, well, like nobody tells you that it's okay to do that, even though right. the, the history of popular culture tells you. I mean, has anybody in musical theater created a character more interesting than James Brown? or Bob Dylan, or, you know, no, they haven't. You know, there's no right. character. You can't invent David Bowie. I mean, he can invent himself, but right. you can't really. So those people were on stages basically making theater. I mean, That's you know, true. if James Brown on the Tammy show taking off eight capes and going off stage and coming back, if that's not theater, I mean, what, is Cats yeah. theater? 
Right. I mean, is, is Les Miserables theater compared to any yeah. well, all, vintage James Brown game? Also, something that was happening that was happening as we were making Passing Strange was everybody's looking at the script, you know, in theater. They're all like <laughs> uh-huh. re- looking through all the words and they're going, well, that can go, you know, like just looking at what's happening. And then we had a lot of um, a lot of conversation about why this song works here Mm -hmm. you know it just like works or it doesn't and it just feels right and you can't like look at at the script and go well that should work you know it's like the songs actually make it work you know and the order of the songs and the silences and the and all that feels just as good as what it's about and all the words you know and musicians know that you know the most messed up thing about musical theater is that it's basically like a lot of theater they look at it as a literary Mm-hmm. Art really, yeah, it's intimidating, and not as a live event, you know. Yeah, you know, I mean, any punk rock band on a Tuesday night who's like, you know, trying to keep people on stage, like the the, the existential reality of that you and I and she have all been in is going on stage a Tuesday night mm-hmm. trying to make people be late for their job. Mm-hmm. We need to do something in that first song that's going to make people want to be late for work again, right? Right, yeah. and that's like dramatic, right? Yeah, I don't need a story. That's the story. The guy has to figure out whether he's going to pick up on this girl, try to get home, with her, try to, get, or is, or is your first song going to be enough to make him, you know, like stand still, you right. know? And like that's the drama, and that's theater too. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, because the, the play doesn't have any competition. Yeah. But in the club, you got that girl at the bar, and like, am I going to listen to Joseph Arthur? Am I going to go and? Talk hit on her. her. Yeah. Well, you in the know? theater, there's that girl sitting next to you, though. There's always a girl. How interesting someone. is that? <laughs> <laughs> She's just wearing different clothes. <laughs> right, <dude>. right. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Very different clothes. <laughs> She's wearing clothes, but anyway. There's that. There's that. I'm sorry. We can edit that part up. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to edit that out. That's way too. That's way too blue for this podcast. Is this recording? I'm paranoid. Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm good. Check, I'm double checking everything right. as we go along. <laughs> Yeah, so well, that's really cool. So so did you so you wrote did you write script around the songs or were the songs the script or how did it how did Passing Strange work? I don't remember the You don't Stu's, remember? Stu is gonna... Tony Award winning <laughs> book writer. So I'm I'm But that's silent. a really good question. I mean It is a good question. Do you I think it, it I, you know what it was? It was like these years of putting it together, like mm-hmm. not even knowing it would go this far, mm-hmm. right? And we were just always at these workshops. And it was just kind of one thing after another and putting things together. And you know how you're putting something together for that presentation at the end of the week, mm-hmm. you know? But that's, so it was like, it was like all these different shows of trying pretty, to make it work. Yeah, I think it was pretty random, actually. I think we, the cool thing about it is that, you, you know, you had like, a, they'd go, okay, we're going to work on this for three weeks. And then at the end of the three weeks, they're going to present it to a small crowd. Mm-hmm. And so those little deadlines, we all know how fun deadlines are, how they make us work towards shit yeah how they make us like get full of anxiety yeah and yeah suicidal <laughs> ideation yeah. and yeah. that too yeah. stuff like yeah, that exactly. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly exactly all that good stuff so we had those the theater would set those up and so that made us have to work you know in the same way that knowing a gig is coming up makes you have to work so mm-hmm. I, it really just kind of i feel i hate the you know it's a dumb word if you live in brooklyn especially if you live in park slope but it was organic mm-hmm. you know i mean it's just I like you said that i did wow. and then we have to edit that out too that's worse than we any definitely gotta edit that out i mean just for your reputation wow. okay i mean we, you. you know we can't let that he's stay. gonna say process next. yeah i won't say process okay, don't say Except it. I'm about james journey. brown's hair then i'll say process don't say but anyway journey. but yeah so you know that that's i think it was pretty random and they were kind of terrified the theater people because they're looking at us like what do you guys don't you know how to, you know it's like no we don't know how to actually make a musical right we're just gonna do this thing but you know i feel like i feel like any rock band knows more inherently about theatricality yeah <laughs> than the average and i'm sorry theater people but than the average theater person yeah because we have to be yeah, but it's also making those connections and giving yourself license and permission. Absolutely. That's that's the leap that most of us can't or haven't made. Okay. And, Fair. You know, it's like Fair. that you're running the first four minute mile with that shit. Fair. You know? Now Fair. I can now I can run a Fair. four minute Fair. mile. Fair. Fair. Now it's Fair. like, oh yeah, all right. Cool. Cool. It's not that hard. No. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No, it's true. It's yeah. true. I mean, we got that we got that the pressure of being in a band i mean like i can i can get freaked out just remembering like i don't even care about like sh- a show if we do like a show at lincoln center or something mm-hmm. uh that's like 
actually sort of like that's not a big deal to me because damn all these people are coming to lincoln center to see that's pretty you know what i remember like the friday night when you're playing with like two other kick-ass bands in a club and you know you have to go for the jugular you know mm -hmm. you know you have to like really kind of it's very military i hate to say it but you know mm -hmm. when we walk on stage we got no opening band it says oh lincoln you know what i mean it's like well, that's that's a piece of cake right. i but the club on friday night <laughs> With 150 people there, where you just know like people are going to be talking about it the next day, at the at the at the cafe, you know. And talking mm -hmm. during the set, like <laughs> where, where right. it's oh, like right, at Lincoln right. Center, they're going to be quiet. Exactly. Yeah, they actually yeah. came for us. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, yeah. The, the deck is definitely stacked in your favor. Exactly. You know, so that that part is easy. But I can remember the the yeah the pressure, and I think that pressure is good. You know, I tell my yeah. You know, I teach, I teach, and I tell my students all the time that uh that. That's like school. Yeah, it keeps you, know? you alive. Yes. I'm facing yes. that pressure right now in a big way. I'm starting a, like a month and a half tour in, on Sunday. Okay. You know, it's the first time in a while that I've like gone out on a solo tour. Okay. You know, doing co-headlining with Jesse Mallon, going all over America. Awesome. And just kind of, awesome. yeah, like <clears throat> it's liberating too. you talking about the George Harrison tribute nights and all that because it's like, I beat myself up for not rehearsing enough. Right. You know, even though right. I'm doing solo. Yeah. Like I should, I should have it more down. Yeah. <laughs> Always. And then I just lay there w looking at my amp and watching Netflix and going like, when are you going to start rehearsing, dude? <laughs> exactly. And you just lay there for yeah. three days yeah. and just no. like, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Well, rehearsing. I find that weird. Like Especially, it's like there's a resistance. But that's to, part of it. It's yeah, like freaking out about it, yeah, right? I, I unfortunately so. <laughs> it has been. Yes, it's part of the process. Yeah, yeah. you said, Sorry, it. I said the no, word. Said it. I um, said yeah. it. Also, though, rehearsing for a solo thing is especially. It's sort of like rehearsing. Yeah. Peeing, you know right it's like you know if you have to do it you can do it <laughs> right but yet you're kind of supposed to rehearse for it because it's a show mm -hmm. yeah. but well you got to learn the words and all, all that, that stuff you know? yeah all that stuff no it's it's a completely different thing yeah but you got to leave room for craziness and happy accidents and Absolutely. improvisation too Absolutely. It can't be too dialed in do you do covers i, I mean here and there mm. You know, that's not really my thing yeah, specifically. Us, 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 us neither. We either do a whole night, but we don't like throw, we don't ever throw covers in with our regular show. We will yeah. do an entire night of covers. Yeah. Right. We usually don't put stuff yeah, in. But that'll yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're a really unique songwriter. Thanks. Yeah. And uh, it's like, yeah, you're, you've, you've got your own, I guess, muse that you're really paying attention to. It seems like that to me. Like, I, I don't hear, I mean, I don't really, you can't really tell what your influences are. Oh, really? That's funny. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I mean, we do, We both do the music and are I do the both, lyrics. You both, right? And, and I feel like uh, it's definitely Los Angeles, a particular mix of like LA sort of sunshiny thing mm -hmm. that we just grew up with, but then soul radio that we both grew listen to mm -hmm. and then punk rock which doesn't mean it has to be fast and have a fuzzy guitar mm -hmm. but it just means you kind of the go attitude. on stage and say fuck you yeah mm -hmm. and so those things all say sort fuck of fuck you by saying i love you exactly exactly <laughs> and know how to say it where that's what it means and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and all those th those three or four things mixed together i think you know you know everybody knows that like la is actually a much it's like you know there's there's enough stories of like the velvet you know exploding yeah. plastic inevitable where warhol and all these guys you know velvets came to mm -hmm. la and they were like they thought oh it's gonna be all picket fences and stuff and they were like i think it was a lou reed quote where he's like or warhol where he was saying like you know you go to these houses with these nice white fences mm -hmm. and they look really nice and then you open the door and he goes we saw shit behind those doors that we'd never seen in new york you know like right. there's an entire porn movie being made and then in the other room there's people shooting up you know what i mean and it's yeah. just like and it's and but the picket fence is what makes it yeah crazy you know and yeah. I feel like LA's always had that like really dark, weird Raymond Chandler thing. All those cliches are actually true. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, LA definitely has, does a weird thing to my soul when I'm there. It's I think it's designed to do that. It's a strange <laughs> thing, and and it's weird too because I resist leaving, and yet I I like become more and more of a shell the longer I'm there until oh, it, finally I can barely get on the plane, <laughs> and then I'm so happy when I'm back in New York. 
<laughs> but it's not to say I don't like LA because I yeah. love it. Yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah. And there's something about it. I think we like it more now that we don't live there. I, yeah, I, I just got back um, <laughs> yeah. yesterday. I feel like I, I I just feel like I'm on vacation. Everything just like stops. Yeah. In know? LA. Yeah, and yeah. then I'm on the phone all the time because I'm in the car on the phone. <laughs> Like so, I catch up with people, mm -hmm. and it's all very vacationy. It feels like it. It yeah. feels vacationy. It's fun. To I me love too. going there now. But I it all—it all, it feels like this thing that's like really nice to eat, but if you just eat it for one more day, yeah. it's gonna kill you on the spot. There's like this, like this sweet yeah. kind of dessert, and you can eat it for a week, maybe two weeks, and then you just feel like the next day it's gonna kill you. So you yeah. better just go. And then I usually stay for another two weeks <laughs> on, top, that on top of that. <laughs> Yeah, that's my way, dude. <laughs> but uh, so you guys live in New York now? Or? Yeah, yeah, we've been Where? here for quite a long time. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, We're both in Brooklyn. Yeah, but not together anymore. But y'all used no. to be. Yeah, we used to be yeah. ten years long, right? In ancient yeah. times, yeah. right? In that's pretty times. wild. Eleven. And the, there's still obviously yeah. an aura of love around. Yeah, look at us. Look at us. I Don't want we? it to work. I want to go all the way back to when it was when it was new. But this is just me. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean it, it. It it helps, and it's it's this crazy, way. and it helps being in, in a group with somebody for so long. You know. Yeah. Where Stu starts gets getting teary when he's talking. <laughs> when, I love that. When, when yeah. you, you Joseph turns into Barbara Walters, and I, I start know. crying. Whoever the person is that makes people cry is at Barbara. Walters. Yeah. yeah, I mean, no, it, it's just like good to have somebody who like knows who loves you. how it works there's that too yeah you guys have love no that's that's true that's yeah. true, that's true. Oh, you should be our therapist yeah you know, when, when you got when you have some time hey man anytime <laughs> i'm definitely looking for a sideline you know how this music business is dude I know. That's, I know. What, I mean, that's what we're here for it's like when <laughs> i am tell you when, no, no, no. when i'm in la i i tend to like walk the streets and so people think oh my i'm god. a hustler oh my god and lately i'm not sure that i'm not one to be honest <laughs> you, you know, walk the streets i might be Wait a, a hustler <laughs> am i a hustler oh why am god. i getting into this car right yeah, exactly. now <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> i just can't stop opening this passenger door <laughs> right Right. But so, like, people resisted admitting that you guys were from L.A. because y'all were too cool for L.A. That's what I heard. We would go to places, San Francisco, and they'd be like, so, so you from New York? No, L.A. Oh, from Chicago? No, L.A. From oh, New you mean York. you're from Seattle? No, I mean... San Francisco. They would, like, literally... No, I, and that's not even an exaggeration. Someone literally Nobody had that conversation. Accept. They would not believe... Yeah. The LA. They kept just inserting cities that yeah. we were supposed to be from. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, we're from. We're actually from LA. I apologize. Yeah. You know. You know. But yeah, that's. But how we left. I mean, this is this is classic, right? I feel like the band I was in in the '80s. I was in this band called Wednesday Week. Uh -huh. It was the same. We just left all the time. And that's how we got. You know, yeah. a record deal, and you know, yeah. I feel like we didn't leave. And Stu and I were like, they would just leave. We left and, all the time. A yeah. lot of bands just kind of hung out. And we're like, I'm gonna get signed and. That wasn't really what we were trying to do. We were trying to just play for as many people as possible, you know? Mm -hmm. And then we came here, and it just kind of like, oh, wow. Felt like for the first time that there was an audience that, like, got the jokes, or even the ones they didn't get, they wanted to get them, you know? Mm -hmm. And they kind of felt like it was, it just felt very comfortable here. You know, I felt like a comedian who kind of found your, like, playing to the band, only the band was the audience. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, this, this is feeling really good, you know? It's feeling... Don't don't you think it's like it's from it's like being from somewhere else is always good. Like I remember the band, I remember the playing these clubs in L. A. and we and we knew how much other people were getting paid that are coming through town. Mm -hmm. We're like, well, what? So we had to be from, from somewhere else, you know, yeah. to get that much. Yeah, yeah, it was, right. it's so yeah, stupid. Yeah. No, I mean you can like definitely. I think we were like refugees, and I think I think New York like cultural refugees. I think New York. New Yorkers had such a low opinion, such an enjoyably low opinion of L.A. that they were like, oh, you guys, welcome. Welcome. You know, we're going to be really nice to you and, and we're going to give you everything you want because you guys belong here, actually. Yeah. You know, you guys are too smart for L.A. So there was definitely this, like, weird kind of, you know, strange compliment. But, you know, I accepted it. I was like, hell yeah, I accepted it. <laughs> I can see that. You know, I totally accepted it. What year yeah. did you move here? Well, we pretended to 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 be from here. No, 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 no. We pretended to be still in L.A. even when we were living here because oh. some New York guys told us keep that L.A. thing going, man. It's working. Well, we, it's well working you know, we you. didn't we didn't live anywhere for two years. Yeah, we because, didn't live anywhere for because two. of the play. This is so cool. You're doing theater, and they just keep putting you places. Like you know, you could work on it here, and you know, we, and then Stu and I finally gave up our apartment. Yeah, and we just put everything in storage, and and they just kept putting us up. 
everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. It was nice to you be know? handed. Uh, when we would come here and work, they would say, okay, here's $3,000. And $3,000 could actually get you a place. So they'd give her $3,000 for, for a month and be like, okay, because we were out of town, you know? Mm -hmm. If we were in town, fuck it, you know? We weren't getting anything like that. So I can remember very clearly, you could get a nice place monthly for 2500 mm. you know? But yeah, so yeah, but we didn't live anywhere for a while. It was really like, it was this band or nothing. <laughs> there was no security thing, you know, to like, uh, you know. Yeah, and then, and then this really cool, like kind of celebrity thing happened where we were supposed to open at the public theater and then I think it was, I want to say like, was it, was it, um, I'm going to get the name wrong. It was, what actor? Kevin Klein. Kevin Klein, like, changed his schedule, and all of a sudden we were bumped. And then, and then, then Stu, then we all went, me and Stu and Annie Dorson, the director, we all went to Berlin for, like, a month, and they put us up so we'd work on the play more. That's fun. You know, stuff yeah. like that was yeah. going Just on. Just go to Berlin and fuck around with the play? Yes. Because <laughs> we were yes, like, well, yes. we don't live anywhere now, that because like we thought dream. we were going yeah, to New York. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. Did it was you? a great deal of fun party your asses off in berlin that's well, what I, they're known for there yeah well i have they're a history known for, like sex dungeons and well, ecstasy yeah well i had a history <laughs> and other stuff yeah but yeah <laughs> no the best you know you know like when you do airbnb right and yeah. you, go, you meet the person so like yeah. i was doing like an airbnb type thing in berlin mm -hmm. and this guy says okay meet me at my job and he gives me the address and i come to the job and it's like a torture chamber see you i know? told you dude. And, and 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 he walks out in a leather shirt and a leather t-shirt which That's is amazing. pretty awesome like leather yeah. pants are one thing but a leather t-shirt is pretty yeah. cool he walks out like literally holding like some ch <laughs> some chains and a leather shirt he says come with me to my flat you know i will show you my flat it's a block away from here and i and and, and i go to the flat it's a very nice flat i decide to you know rent it from him and then we go back to the now torture you were like oh no need i'm gonna take the <laughs> yeah, place right, 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 right when you right. saw <laughs> but but that is Ber but that is berlin where the guy says meet me at my job yeah and you walk in and there's like you know judges and businessmen yeah. lined up you know ready to go get yeah. the shit beat out of them and he walks out in a leather t-shirt and he's like you know, this he doesn't blink. I'm like, yeah, this is yeah. it again. The, the 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 stereotypes are some of them are very true. That's you know? so funny, man. Yeah, imagine that. Like, I don't know if that was my job, right? Like, no judgment, <laughs> but if that was my job, I don't think my first intro would be meet me at my job. <laughs> I think I'd be like, I'll meet you at the corner. Exactly. And I think I'd probably change the leather shirt. That's you might, me, you though. You might switch out the I shirt. I would be like, let me switch out the shirt. For an go, REM uh, for an REM shirt. <laughs> you know, like, let me put this REM shirt on and go ahead and give Stu the keys and see if he wants to take the place. Exactly. I'll explain this whole situation <laughs> later. <laughs> no, that's how it is. That's just how it is. It's really funny. It's really funny. That's funny. So did you, uh, well, for one, I hope you wrote a song about that guy. You know, I never have. And if you haven't... I've, there's a, there's enough S&M references, but I don't know if I've ever actually written a song about that guy. Yeah. I, that's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> and did you get involved... Did you uh, did you wind up in a leather shirt yourself at any point? No, no, or? no, but I always well, I always wanted one. They don't really... Uh, <laughs> such a good question. Well, there was, a, there, there was the morning when I went for... Uh, I was looking for a cafe, mm -hmm. and I was sitting outside in this in Schoenberg, mm -hmm. and um, I started noticing all these guys guys as, as big as me and bigger with beards like mm -hmm. just taking up the seats eventually you know mm -hmm. and i'm just like you know reading and drinking coffee and then like i look up and it's amazing i am out at an outdoor cafe with 35 men who all are either my size or bigger with beards and i'm like oh cool so i i just i'm hanging out at a bear uh a bear bear thing. Thing. outdoor the cafe bear thing. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. it was like again berlin you know shirtless and hairy right yeah 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 and Harness, i felt fully so fully clothed you know i had my <laughs> usual thing i'm like you know it's like this is like the most body positive well, Stu always wears a harness yeah. under his it's shirt all, so yeah yeah you know, leather harness it's yeah, true. It's yeah. True. You're like, you know what? Let me take my shirt off right now. I'm just feeling. I'm in the free, middle of I'm feeling myself right now. Suddenly, I'm feeling free. In the middle of this, this cappuccino, let me take my shit off. <laughs> let me just tweak my nipples while I sip my cappuccino. I don't know. Just like new feelings right exactly. now. I don't know. Like, exactly. I don't know why I want to do this. Come to Berlin. I just do. Come to Berlin. <laughs> like, so, how did you like? Because who put on the play, and how did you go from? Being a band that was making, you know, rock and roll music and very interesting and original rock and roll music that I could see very easily how somebody would want 
this to go in this direction. How did you manifest it? And who came in or did you seek it out or what? This guy, Bill Bragan, who was booking uh, Joe's Pub back in the day. Um, we were uh, recommended by a guy from the Black Rock Coalition named Daryl McNeil. Came to Bill, who was booking Joe's Pub, and was just like, you should get hip to these guys. And he uh, he called us, you know. Yeah, a lot of people kept saying Bill Bragan, Bill Bragan. He, yeah, so he, he called us. And, you know, at that time you would call Joe's Pub and they would be like, we are not taking unsolicited blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, he just gave us a call. And then we got booked there and everyone was like, this is great. You guys got booked. Yeah. And, and do you remember what happened? Um, we got no, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got booked and we're like, this is cool, Joe's Pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, a week later, Lincoln Center called because we got a review in the New York Times. One of our records got a positive review. And they were like, do you guys want to play here? So like the cool Joe's Pub thing was like, sorry, Joe's Pub, uh, do you mind if we have to play Lincoln Center now? So we're going to mm -hmm. like have to yeah. push this. So again, misfortune, you know? I mean, New York was just like charmed. When it rains, it and, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and cut to me um, living in Bill Bragan's house right now. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because he, he's in he's Abu Dhabi. He's in Abu Dhabi, yeah. and I live there, and him, him and his wife, Lisa Philp. Yeah. But I mean, like, I really, I really feel like the thing with New York is just there's just so many. We would not have a career any place else in the world <laughs> except here. We it is just New York has so many fucking niches, you know. Right. It's just there is just no yeah there's just no way this this happens here. It might have come up. It could have happened anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Our band could have happened anywhere else. But in terms of like you know, I laugh every day that I'm making. A living after having formed a band called the Negro Problem, and like mm -hmm. I'm, when when in any sort of check comes in the mail, yeah. I just laugh, I giggle because it's yeah, like you, it's I mean, no, uh, no shit, man. You're like a kind of a genius songwriter, though. Well, you're a, yeah. they're a very sweet person for saying that. I mean, I know I'm a sweet person, <laughs> but you really are very talented at thank songwriting. You, thank you, thank and, you. But that and, doesn't you always and you as well. And, but that, and, thank you. I, I write some of the music. You, that's how I put it. I write some of the music. But you know, man, yeah, that doesn't like, always. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. I mean, but I'm just saying, like, thank you. You know, that's a that's that's not you know that's not normal, and and you know a lot of people are doing you know making a lot more than either you or me, and yeah, can write as well. But right. that sounds like sour grapes and weird. It ain't shit. though. It ain't. It's true. I don't, I don't true. mean that. It's, just it's totally true, true. You know, it's so totally you know, true. It's like uh, I just remember growing up and like you know every record that seemed to be really really interesting to me. You know, beyond the usual big Beatles and Stevie Wonder stuff. But I mean, like, when I really started, and I know it's the same for anybody who gets into this, when you start hearing, like, you know, Tim Buckley yeah, or Nick Drake, and you're like, this wasn't famous as hell when this guy was alive. It just kind of freaked, <clears throat> right. you know what I mean? It kind of scares the shit out of you in a way. It is well, yeah. No, it's scary, but they, but also like Nick Drake gave up so true, soon. true, true, true. It's true. like then, then the mythology was if you don't have it happen by the time you're 27, right, right, it's right, done. Right, right, you right, right. might as true, well forget true, it. So true. he like accidentally kills himself or kills himself on purpose. Yeah. I don't know how it was but at 26. Yeah, you know. So it's like, and he put out four albums, and they're genius, and especially yeah. Pink Moon, in my yes. opinion. Yeah, but me like, too. Uh, me too. You know, but you know, hang on. If without question, like without we're, question. We're, we're keeping on keeping on. And we're without question. just over 26. Right, exactly. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. A couple of days. Just yeah, a yeah. Few, few couple of yeah, years yeah. over 26. <laughs> no, I mean, I two of, yeah, three of us. for sure, for sure. No, yeah. you're right. I mean, I talk to people who are like 23 years old saying, yeah. I'm just slogging through the scene and it's just, <laughs> they're like, you know, they're like, like old, like they're old veterans. It's just like mm -hmm. gig after gig and we just play Tuesday night and I'm like, mm -hmm. and you're 23. It's like, yeah. you could, yeah. you know, how about doing this for the next five years, yeah. you know? Well, what's the secret? And I'm like, play yeah. as, as good a show yet? as you can. Yeah. You know, it's like, play it. <laughs> no one's down here. No problem. <laughs> Our clothes are on. <laughs> you know, like, be, be, yeah, but really, like, the, the, they're the sort of like, they're, because they got, you know, a million YouTube hits or whatever their friend did. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just like, uh, I don't know what to do. I'm just, yeah. I've been doing this for like two years. Mm -hmm. Right. I've been doing this for two years and nothing's happening. I know. <laughs> Even people in their late 20s, I'm like, you know, they're like, they get all bent out of shape. And I'm like, literally, you c I tell people, I'm like, you know what? Life is actually long. 
Yes. And you yes. can really, even at this point, <laughs> yes. do anything yes. you want. Yes. Yes. You yeah. have yeah. that yeah. much time. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. It's yeah. Actually, a lot longer than you think. It actually kind of drones on and yes, on and yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, yes, yes. Lock it in. Yeah, yes. I, you know what I was going to say about like uh, um, um, over the years, like just different people in the band that would play with us, and we're either playing like some really big show with a whole bunch of people, or we're playing like. In a little tiny club, mm -hmm. and they get like. Remember, I, I want to bring up. I don't want to start saying don't names. Don't say any names. I want to say any names. <laughs> but we were playing with a drummer, and it was, and we were opening for Adam. Right, we were doing like a counting crows, crows thing. Mm -hmm. It's like a big crows thing, and Stu actually announced from the stage that that we were um playing like you know this little club Hollywood Alley the next and, day. And, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. in you Arizona. Know? And and I just remember looking at Josh and, and and being like um. You just said his name. I just said his name. Well, I love Josh. This is not, this is not a bad thing. <laughs> I just remember. I, yeah, just, yeah, I yeah. just remember. I just remember. He was so excited. Like this is what it's all about. Like yeah, we had like people picking yeah. up our equipment and stuff. Yeah, right. And he it's thought. like, oh no, 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 <laughs> no. no, that's not gonna happen. This is, well, this is like kind Col of fun right now. Right. But this is. Yeah. Well, like Cobain, you know, said the smartest thing about rock starism, and he was like, you know, he was like, he would carry his guitar a lot when they were famous, and he was like, I'm carrying it because if I get used to not carrying it. For sure, one day I'm going to be carrying it again. And I was like, that's like smarts, you know? Like, mm -hmm. that's a, somebody who understands how this system can work, you know? Right. And so, yeah, this idea, like, we would, that was like a, the best week of our lives. We play, we opened for the Crows. We played for some crazy stadium yeah, situation. Kinda... And then we literally played our favorite club in Arizona, like, the next night for, like, 200 people. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, and both gigs were great, you know. Mm. But I mean, like, I really felt like that was like the best yeah, yeah. forty-eight hours of yeah, my life. Yeah, and lives, it's really you know? fun over the years, especially in theater, and go, oh God, we're gonna have somebody picking up. You know, I want somebody to pick up my bass and carry it across the room. <laughs> Just carrying it in the case hurts my back now. So I'm really excited when we're doing mm. anything that involves right, right, that. Right, 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 right. Sadly, that's like right. really exciting for me. Right. Right. Yeah, I haven't had that in a while. The old somebody else carrying my shit. <laughs> you know, it's been a long while. They do it a lot in theater. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they do it where they hand you the, the there's a union guy handing you a guitar who doesn't know about guitars, mm -hmm. but the union says he can do it. Right. So one night I got handed a guitar in front of like, you know, a, a theater full of people yeah. and it was a solo moment in the, one of our plays uh -huh. and he handed me the guitar and his hand was around the tuning heads so I basically did the song acapella and then the next that night I had to go we're bringing in a guitar tech and they were like well he's right. not a union guy so we're not doing a show again with this guy touching what? our guitar so there are things about I love that, that was our problem <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. That's what... yeah yeah but well, that is a big problem though. it's a big problem yeah because it's like I mean it seems like he might be having a diva moment to people who don't know but actually that's kind of a big deal I know like, but we have like now a props... all of a sudden he's got to sing it acapella right, but, we have like, like... A, but we have a union you know props guy like, right, we're right, like right. All... Just, right. To, just, just to say that theater folk do pick yeah, things yeah. up a lot they really do pick them yeah. up a lot it's nice it's nice of them just need to know how to pick things up properly so, so this guy who booked you for Joe's pub he's Bill Bragan Bill yeah. Bragan and he's the one who kind of said hey let's make let's take this to Broadway or? no he couldn't do that by any means no. all he did was say come on introduce to us to the public theater oh okay because he was Joe's pub is connected to the public you know oh, okay so, so he, all he did was started booking us he started booking us at, at the at Joe's pub and then so when did you we got on their radar so you got in the writer, but when did you make the connection of I can make a musical? Two thousand. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I haven't made that connection yet. Two thousand one. Two thousand one, maybe. I don't no, know. hell no. What are you talking about? It's I'm like thinking of Lincoln Center. Six. No, no, because we did. Now I see why long. you guys broke up. <laughs> no, you can't that... even get dates right. Six. <laughs> six. Two thousand six. What? No, no way. When it all started? No, two thousand six because... is Berkeley. Two thousand seven is Public Theater. Two thousand eight is Broadway. Yeah, you're talking about when it. See, maybe I lost track of the actual question. Was it well, like just, when? Well, just I'm just trying to get a handle on how this happens. Oh, like, okay. On how this happens from like being a rock and roll band, like albeit a very interesting one, with dramatic songs that lend themselves to this idea. So it's not a massive. Leap, right, right. How okay. does it get from okay. that? Because even David Bowie. Right. Always talk, talked about the fact yes, that he yes. wrote musicals like yes. that that were going to be. He always envisioned them as theatrical pieces. Yes, yes, yes. Like you know Ziggy Stardust yes, and Sp yes, you know yes. all this type of stuff. 
but he never made the leap. Right, right, like, right. And right, so right. y'all made the leap. And so that's a, actually a very so, impressive well, I, thing to do. And so I'm just trying to figure out how to do it. Basically, so I can make the leap. Got really. it, got it. So, but I so bet you other me. people are curious, <laughs> too. I yeah. was raising my hand. Did you notice? Yes, I, I, t- I don't I talk much, to, but I, I raise my hand. I tend to ramble on. Go no. for it. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, Stu just talks a lot on stage, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what was happening at the, at the pub. At the pub. Right? right. And so Bill, it was great because he was like, you know, get you a, a commission to write a musical. And well, you lied, right? And said I had an idea. I lied and said which I, is I had an idea and I didn't. And um, the way it happens is that, and Joe Papp used to do this, the founder of the public theater. Mm-hmm. The way it happens is someone gives you a small amount of money and says, in six months, I want you to show up with whatever you got. Mm-hmm. And when you show up, you perform basically for the entire crew at the theater, you know, the office people and whatever folks that they want to bring by. And they see what you have. So it's really, in a sense, like auditioning your work. Mm-hmm. And Joe Papp, apparently, they said, used to, he'd meet a poet in Washington Square and be like, here's a here's hundred bucks, you know, if you got to play and you bring me something, you know, in a few months. So it's basically a step by step process. Mm-hmm. They want to see what you've got. And then they listen to it and see what, what what they think. And then if they like it, you come back. You keep coming and, back. And it's not like we thought we were going to get that far. It was no, just we like one, we just kept making records and touring in the middle of all this. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, they're paying us to show up and yeah. talk about what we want to make. And yeah. then we go. And then also we're at Sundance. It was yeah. like, oh, my God. Right. But the thing is, but the thing that's most crucial, like really the, the most crucial thing about this is that the reason why at some point we realized oh yeah this is actually going to happen because most musicals are kind of like a lot of other musicals and what we have coming from our world was original yeah and we have but we also have this thing i've been talking about we have this built-in theatricality Mm. you know we never went to drama school but we (laughs) we have a built-in theatricality Mm -hmm. we know what to do when the guitar breaks down when the when the drummer falls off stage whatever we 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 when we have to or explodes we know how to talk (laughs) to large groups of people all those things i mean we know that already it's already there and we weren't trying to fit into what we thought they wanted because we didn't think we would get that far anyway Yeah. yeah so what so when you guys presented what did you present We'd present songs and, and some uh, and whatever some dialogue, dialogue we had. Yeah. And mm-hmm. was it canned, the dialogue, or did you make it up No, the, the first time we did it for George Wolf, who's like the big guy at the public at the time, we basically, I read through the play, and Heidi like and playing, a keyboard player so. backed me up, and I read all the parts and just literally so at a table. So you wrote something, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had songs, and we had dialogue, dialogue and I just did it all at the table, like in a... In a, in a in a glorified broom closet, basically backstage yeah, at the yeah. uh, public theater. Huh. It was, it was, and they just sat around and listened to us, you know. And yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty much about them wanting to see what you got. Uh, yeah. You yeah. know that that's that's the way they all are. Whether they whether whether they send you to the Sundance Institute to work or whatever, the bottom line is, they want you what to you work. Got? You present, they hear it, and then they decide. And it's not like at that moment they sign, seal, deliver. It's like then they'll call you back in six months and go, okay, we want to see more. We want to hear more. And we were working with this director, Annie Dorson, and um, and she kept. Um, it was great because early on she kept, you know, going, reminding us who we are and not trying to fit into that world. You yeah, know? yeah, that, that was a really yeah. The the most so revealing. So you got lucky with the director for sure. For sure. Because another director could have been like, hey, let's make this more like something we've seen before. Well, exactly. To that yeah. point, um, this isn't something the public theater would like me to talk about. But after our success, they started a program of pairing directors with Musicians. singer-songwriters. Yeah. And none of them worked. And I can tell you all the singer-songwriters that they chose were really good quality singer-songwriters. Right. But the directors were doing exactly what you just said. Uh. They were trying to get them to fit in. And uh, I, you know, because I, I heard from the singer-songwriters, they would, you know, contact me, you know, or, right. or, or, or some of the people in the theater and it would be like the directors were trying to get them to fit into the box. And our director, Annie Dorson, was, was, was cool enough to be like, no, actually, you guys need to do what you do because what you guys inherently do, she'd be like, where do you stand? How would you 
get from point A to point B in this? How would a person in a rock band do that? You know, that's what she was interested in. So she liked seeing the things that we actually did as opposed to this would be nice if you, you know, Mm -hmm. did this. This would be theatrical. This would be this. This would be that, you know. Even volume, dude. We had like this guy who did sound for the Super Bowl who came in because the producers were freaking out when we got to Broadway because the show was too loud. Mm-hmm. And he tried to turn you down. Yeah, and, and we were like, no, it's not going to get turned down. So they brought in this guy, Frank Filippetti. Remember him? Yeah. This guy's like, he literally like just like did, he brought in all this stuff, like he's like this sound stuff because he knew we didn't want to turn down, but the producers wanted to hear the words, which I'm fine with that, right? right. So they didn't have the equipment. So they actually brought in this guy who's like a sound, full on sound geek guy, so that we could get the vocals over the music because they would just sit out there during like, you know, rehearsals and freak out. Like, people can't come to, you know, this show without it being, you know, without every single word being heard. And mm-hmm. every word wasn't always heard no, regardless. No, but but still, it yeah. didn't, didn't matter. It didn't really matter. Was there characters or were you guys the characters? No, there were characters. Oh, okay. But even the characters were like more like performers. Uh-huh. Like they they were like people we chose because they were cool. They had, you know, we okay. had a few, I won't name any names, but a few of our actors were not like real Broadway types at all. Mm-hmm. And the casting people, the first were kind of like, well, we need those kind of like, no, we don't. We do not need those belting vibrato people. Mm-hmm. We need people that have an attitude and a vibe. So mm-hmm. we pretty much picked people kind of like the way you choose a band. a band. Nobody was nobody was chosen because they had pipes. Right. You know, everybody was chosen. And we made them all. My advice to anybody auditioning a show, if you're doing a rock show, uh, have the actors audition with a punk rock song, preferably a x-ray specs or the damned or yeah we did that it was so much bad fun brains. it was bad really brains. fun yeah because you'll find out if they've got at least Rock something close to that you know yeah and when they embrace it it's like so cool to see that yeah. you know but don't have them do you have any hysterical stories about a theater guy trying to sing a bad brain song or something like that <laughs> <laughs> I think I've blocked those out in therapy I think uh, yeah yeah I, I think of whoo yeah not we, to re-traumatize no, you. No, no, no. We, we we had some rough moments going. There was some casting. Um, there yeah, there's some, some really that's, great, that's great hysterical. casting stuff. We couldn't even look at each other because it was just like, it was hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be sitting there like, yeah. Well, I, well, Springsteen's thing on Broadway was like obviously song-led and it, it worked. That's it, just it, him too, right? And it's just, did you know, you didn't see it? I didn't see it, no. I saw it. And, and it's like, you know, it's like a... It's like an elongated storyteller yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. where it's like based on the sort of stories between the songs. And yeah. he would go deeper into that, and it was yeah. deep. I want you know. to see that. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it's on, on Netflix. Netflix. It is? You know, oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But that's tonight. what I mean. See, yeah. that's what, what is he but all... It I'm guessing that all he's really doing is... is, is is playing elongating the, the the between song banter, right? Basically, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 that's what I'm saying. Longer stories that were, you know, obviously like rehearsed and all that. But, yeah. But still, yeah, it, it it was it had a similar effect to just he, like to to what y'all are doing in terms of being inspiring and like, hey, this is not unattainable. Like, right. I don't have to suddenly go to college and get a doctoral degree in playwriting <laughs> right. to do this. God, right. For heaven, right? You know, I Forbid, can just come yeah. up with a story, and your story was abstract too, right? Yeah, I mean, it was like you know, it was like very much not the, the thing about our it wasn't story wasn't a linear narrative kind of thing yeah well it was following this guy right? right but in situations that were very absurd and not like you know i mean it had this emotional undertow which i didn't realize was happening until people told me afterwards mm-hmm. this connection with his mother that he had left in order to go through europe and sort of find himself and get, become an artist and all that but you know we never had anybody believe or try to make anybody believe for a second for instance that these characters were like real like mm-hmm. it was very performative you know and that's what i kind of mean like staying true to that rock and roll thing we weren't like pretending you know the people on stage were the actual people on stage we had one point one whole act where the they're all black actors and they were playing germans and playing dutch people Mm -hmm. and it completely worked because we were just owning the fact that yeah these are who these people are and we're making up we're having fun right now with you and and mm -hmm. everybody accepted you know it was really great as it was going along because this is based on Stu's story you know Mm -hmm. and and um and people got so attached to it that they they couldn't believe that it wasn't exactly Exactly the way it happened they got like real it was really like wow okay yeah it was an auto well we called it autobiographical fiction Mm -hmm. things that were inspiring that actually happened Mm -hmm. but nothing 
including the dramatic high points in it, were all made up. You know? Right. So it's like, yeah, but you know, they have the, again, they have that kind of thing where like it's. Um, I guess we have that in rock too. I guess where we kind of believe that everything is um, autobiography mm-hmm. in some way. But I don't know. It's different. Anyway, it's different. You know, in creativity, we tend to overthink mm-hmm. things, and that can stop, you know, action. And yeah. it's like, I think you like achieve things when you just sort of let go yeah. of your ideas and ideals of how it should be, and you yes. just kind of do it. Yes. And, and yeah, when you have a deadline, like, hey, you got to present this now, that galvanizes totally you into action. Absolutely, absolutely. Stops procrastination. <laughs> Did you ever do stand-up comedy? Dude, no, but Are I... Are you interested I, in it? Oh, like, I, the biggest compliment I ever got in any review was one of our Joe's Pub shows mm-hmm. where they said we were a combination between... They mentioned some band and Richard Pryor, and mm-hmm. I was just like, that, that ended it for me. No, I worship comedians, and I feel like it's the highest form of American art, certainly. Yeah, and, um, I'm, I'm with you on that. You know, and, and I... New York allowed me really. I mean, I did it in L.A., but New York really allowed me to kind of the whole between song banter thing mm-hmm. to really come out more with that mm-hmm. because the audiences here were so eager to like engage and like be yeah. challenged, you know. And you could say fucked up shit, and they would be like, you know, yeah, more, okay, you know. So that brought it. They brought that out in me more, way mm. more as a problem. I mean, now, even she and I, you know, we get into this thing on stage, which is hilarious because people know we're exes. Mm-hmm. So we kind of have this back and forth that we do. And it's, on one hand, it's total shtick. But on the other hand, I mean, we don't plan it at all. She comes up with these zingers and I don't well, know they're I'm coming. Not, I'm not funny, but it's so easy. No, you are fucking funny. You are it, but it's funny. just so easy. No, you're, fun, you're funny. Yeah. It's easy to zing me. And she does it and she never warns me. And so people know that my reactions are genuine, you know, when I'm getting zinged. And yeah. so, no, it, 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 it's, 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 it's really, for me, really related to, to comedy. It's like I, you know, I, that's what I, that's my YouTube doesn't it Addiction. creep into your lyrics as well? Like for sure, na- man. For naked sure. Dutch painter. For and sure, for sure. All of it. Yeah, all of that. Comedy all over the place. Yeah, no, I, I worship, you know, from Lenny Bruce and Pryor, but also like, you know, Chris Rock and Chappelle and all those. I'm, I'm into all that stuff. I just feel like the more uncomfortable and the nothing is greater than something being uncomfortable and you have to laugh also oh my god yeah i mean this is what Chappelle yeah. always says he goes okay so i said this and i said that but did you laugh or not mm-hmm. right yeah. and i like his new special i haven't seen it yet i'm waiting oh, right. i'm waiting i'm waiting i'm Let's waiting but you know what i mean it's 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 like yeah. that's the part that i think people hate i laughed we're almost mad that he made us laugh yeah. you know what i mean and i love that kind of conflict you know but you know when i joined the band the the, the on the, the first i'm not on the first record i joined the band the negro problem and, and the first record it was the record release party mm-hmm. right before that and the first cut on that record um the the chorus is um but what does robert hilburn know about rock and roll mm-hmm. you know it's the, it's the, the editor of the music of the la, times. Of the LA right. times like Stu on the first track is right. like saying something that's like really funny and really like i, I can't and believe he's saying this that was, you know? that was yeah and that, that was, was totally super punk rock like i don't oh. it's like this coming out like this like you can't t- you know <laughs> yeah but see that's a, that was that, crazy but see, that's and, and i gotta definitely say that that's much more calcul that's much more Mal- malcolm mclaren than uh than maybe uh than uh i would have admitted back then i mean i knew taking it wasn't like hey man i'm so punk rock as if i mean i did hate the critic but you knew taking a shot would get you attention boom yeah knew, knew a, it right away yeah knew first song on the album yes you know, and everybody else is like, "What?" I'm like, "No, that's what every critic talked yeah, about cool. when they reviewed us." Everybody said. And did that. he write mm-hmm. a review himself? He didn't. But what um, a pussy. Excuse my language. Did. We got to edit that out. <laughs> In 2018, 19, whatever, 20. <laughs> yeah, right. Where are, we? Is, Where are we? You cannot say that. What a very wimpy person. <laughs> I don't but know. Did you know? What did you was? know? Uh, <laughs> what year are we talking about? Was, we are talking about um, uh, nine, 97, 97. 97, yeah. But 97. you know, I want to say something. I don't know if I ever told you this. What? I probably did. Robert Hilburn, the band I was in in the 80s, mm-hmm. I, I wrote just like a couple songs on the record. And um, um, one of my songs, Robert Hilburn voted as um song of the year like no no it was like one of one of his top 10 like indie whatever you know indie or something yeah 
Yeah. Yeah, he was just doing that to get it. So I think he's so I think <laughs> no, he's a great guy. Kidding. So I think he knows a lot about rock and roll. Wait, like Heidi wrote mine. this one? <laughs> yeah, Heidi. Let me uh let me like get stupid. <laughs> yeah. That's like actually genius level chess, it is. right? It there. is, it is, it is. <laughs> actually <laughs> Heidi's song is the best. Right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm exactly. sure it was because it was amazing. But isn't and that it, funny? Isn't that funny? Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. And that then, is you know, funny. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It was uh it was that was that was I love I love uh, engaging with critics and I I think I caught that bug from from Lou Reed who used to mm-hmm. always Lester bitch Banks. It, yeah who always used to bitch at uh, critics and talk back and everyone was like no you got to be above that man mm-hmm. you got to be above that I'm like no nah, I'm not gonna why not what the, what the yeah, fuck Lou hated Lester all the way to the end yeah <laughs> yeah for real even after Lester <laughs> no, he died. Did. He was, because I asked him once. I knew Lou, and really? I, I asked him about Lester Banks because really, I'm did. a fan of Lester Banks. Me too. That me too. Carburetor tongue. Oh book hell is, yeah! Hell I yeah! I mean, to me, he's one of the greatest yeah. music writers Without of question. all time. Without question. You know, um, and Lou Lou wasn't having it. He's like that. That was, you know, he did not forgive. You know, rock and roll never. But but do you think you're ever going? Because this is something I want to try to do too. Is like sometime like because I my banter is extended too, and I can mm-hmm. I can be kind of funny. I can spin spin a yarn. And uh, have you ever wanted to like just go for the stand up comedian scene, or do you just go? because the thing is with what we're doing. No matter what, you can't really bomb because you can always just go into a song. <laughs> exactly. And then it's like, it can just, at exactly. the worst, it's going to be some awkward stage banter. Right, right, right. Which is actually kind of entertaining in and of itself. Right, right, right. Then going into a jam Dude, saves you. But if you're up there without being able to go answer, into a jam. A large part of my worship you. for. Thank you. A large part of my worship for those comedians is that I would never jump off that cliff yeah. never no that's the thing you got to have i got to have the guitar yeah just in case i'm not you're so that. you're not interested in, do, in trying i'm it. interested yeah because it's i'm like, interested because also it's lucrative as hell <laughs> it, no, but for real though you got to think like that and it like you know comedians like it's like the new th- it's Dude. the new thing it's like everybody's like you know like it's like they're on the rise and it's like I've, for you, it's just yeah, like Stu. one little DNA bl- blip yeah, away you from. Do it. <laughs> you know why you should do it, Stu? <laughs> one little DNA <laughs> fucking. An opening that, set of yeah. No, the that show. is actually a total safety net. That's genius, actually. Yeah. That is fucking That's smart. That's actually a good idea. That's really smart. Set. Can I do it too? <laughs> yeah. can, can you also direct that at me so I feel inspired too? That is hilariously <laughs> genius. Arthur opening up for Joseph Arthur. Thanks. That is very genius. Genius. That is you know, we, might, we got a what we got a we got a we got a monthly series Start at small. Joe's Start pub. Five yeah, minutes. no, we got a monthly because series at Joe's pub. Because maybe you're really good at month. it, and you never know until you like jump and the net will appear type of thing. That is true. You know, a whole new this world. This is the first podcast interview where I've, I'm actually. And you know what? You, 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 you hate. Enriching. This is a <laughs> life enriching. Informative. Hey. You, that's what it's, you, that's you what hate we're doing carrying here. your guitar. It's perfect. You hate yeah. carrying it. You just you should just exactly. We'll try it at Joe's. Sam I'm Hart. not saying give up music. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> well, I'm just, on the you know, side, like get your Netflix special on. Right. <laughs> you know, I just, put a couple <laughs> extra mil in the old bank account. And, yeah, you know, I gotta watch a whole lot. Of imagine art. being able to go tour, just like, oh, let me let me just like pack my little suitcase Dude, full I've, of outfits. No fucking pedal board. I've, no exactly, fucking, exactly. Like, no fucking pedal board, dude. Like, come no on. No sound check. No sound check. Is you this know? on? Boom, mm-hmm. boom. Is this <laughs> SM58 on? Hello. And when you're you happy, know, you know, everybody's happy, you know. It's just, true. You, it's true. It's you know. true. Wait, what do you mean when you're happy? I just said I, I just said him not carrying a guitar around oh. and he's happy. It's like it make, happy. yeah, everybody in the room is happy. I feel like it's true. though when you're a comedian, don't you at some point have to really get into Drugs. heavy drug use? Yeah, I, I know you're gonna say <laughs> I know, that. I know, I know. <laughs> just the whole like self. You never went through that phase. Heavy drug use? No, yeah. never heavy. The heaviest I got was was in um, Amsterdam. Surprise. Mm-hmm. And with uh, the German guy in the leather shirt, <laughs> a couple bumps with that. No, he guy. wouldn't be allowed. He wouldn't be allowed. In, he wouldn't be Come allowed. On, in a Amsterdam. couple bumps with that guy. For he wouldn't sure. be allowed. In Amsterdam. <laughs> no, no, no. What was his name? Yeah, uh, right. Come right, on, come on. <laughs> no, what happened in Amsterdam? What happened? In- oh, everything. I mean, yeah. we were, we were, we were, uh, we definitely um, party your ass We off. we sampled everything that there could be. Yeah, sampling's one thing. That's all good. I mean, I'm talking about what does it become a lifestyle? Never. The exploration. Oh, lifestyle? No. But I mean, like, that's hard to. Well, 
wait, lifestyle? I'm not sure what that what that I mean, lifestyle Like I forgot ha- to look, hash- I forgot to sleep for a year for No, instance. no, no, like, not that. that. No, not that, know, not like, that, not that, not at that. At one point. No, not that. <laughs> like, I mean actually actually it's, Yeah, no, not that. No, speaking of lifestyle, actually, I think Amsterdam and Berlin hash is like just another a variation of like coffee. Oh, hash? That's yeah, nothing. You know, bro. you know, you know, you know. I mean I'm like talking about the yeah, hard stuff. The hard stuff. Yeah, we sampled everything. There's nothing. There, no, no, no. I mean, actually, actually. There goes your presidency, Stu. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, yeah. Go, there went your presidency. I right never, I never, I never, I never did any crack. I never did any crack. That's for sure. Man, and, you're really and missing out. I, I know. I hear. I hear. I'm joking. I hear, I hear, I'm joking. It's I hear. awful. And uh, my nose, <laughs> my nose, uh, my sinuses didn't allow uh, much cocaine use. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, we uh, we that uh, German fella could have taught you other ways <laughs> of doing coke. That's all I'm gonna say, Stu. <laughs> don't think I don't know. There's that. other don't ways. Don't think I don't know. That. It can go in other. <laughs> you can areas. snort in other. You can snort through other holes. <laughs> <laughs> you know the old Stevie Nicks story. <laughs> I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. I wondered why when I saw them at the forum ages ago, she would disappear during the songs that mm-hmm. um, she wasn't singing. This is a long time yeah. ago. Those are rumors. I don't know. That I don't was know the if album that's title. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rumor. Rumors. Oh, there you go. Anyway, what do you think, Heidi? Are we I, was, I was staying out of that. <laughs> I, I, I said a couple things under everybody. Yeah? yeah. What did you say? Um, I don't know. Talking about Heidi's drugs. wilder than me. You have wilder huh? t- you have yeah. wilder I, I had my L.A. times. What I was had your LA, L.A. times, times like? I, 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 I was like, you know, I don't think it was lifestyle. I think, right. I, I think it was, you know what it was? I was really shy, uh-huh. and I think certain things made me talk more right. and it was really and I, you know here's what it is I have really good memories of doing stuff I'm not yeah. like I, ha- I had all these friends that had to stop because they did too much right. Right. but I was just like oh you know this is great this, you know, <laughs> I can't, why can't we keep doing this yeah. well, so I I don't know I, I'm uh, I'm lucky you know? I still don't nothing, is, nothing was ever as good for me as like teenage acid though mm-hmm. I have to say that was nothing was as completely fun and sort of directly connected to what i enjoyed about like music and art than that that mm-hmm. sort of like accommodated my life and like helped i think you know yeah everything else was sort of like a a strange accessory <laughs> but how but, old but, were you when you first did acid 16 i was 15 16 yeah i well, it's not a competition it sounded like a competition when I said I was fifteen, <laughs> but like, <laughs> what was the music? <laughs> what happened? What? How? Where were you? In L.A. Definitely in L.A. Yeah. Friend's house. Um, what music? Oh, I think there was all sorts of music. I think there was all kinds of music. I wish I could remember exactly what the music was. Mine was one album, Rush. Hemi- um, wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. That, that kind of messed me up for yeah, years. Yeah, I was going to say. I was going to say. I still haven't recovered from that, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, wow. No, yeah. I was I was luckier. I had, um, I had um, probably a lot of English. It wasn't really like the proper psychedelic sounding stuff. Probably a lot of English New Musical Express type. Mm-hmm. stuff you know like xtc and you know weird stuff like that it probably mm-hmm. wasn't it, pr- it probably wasn't anything properly psychedelic until oh 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 i know yeah it was no it was properly psychedelic it was the first pink floyd album wow oh, that's, so that's, that's what it was nice. it was the first pink floyd it album. gets none more psychedelic than yeah, the yeah, first yeah 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 I, fr- I forgot i forgot i forgot, I forgot. I forgot. yeah yeah no sid barrett sid barrett for sure was was and is like a huge you know influence on me and um yeah that was that was yeah acid was 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 uh super important Mm -hmm. to me and we always wanted to be this negro problem always kind of wanted to be this psychedelic band that sort of like this weird curio that you would like find i'm really into like what i call 3 a.m music which is like the Mm -hmm. record that your friend plays after you go home with them after mm-hmm. the club, you know. After and the come down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And somebody put, that's how I heard Tim Buckley for the first time. That's how I heard Nick Drake. It's always like, hey, listen to this, you know. That's how I first heard Alan, Alan Toussaint. You know, it's just like w- that stuff that you're not going to always hear on the radio, you mm-hmm. know. And that stuff that's like, whoa, you know. Or like the fall, you know, stuff like that. That someone just plays you when it's just you and this other person. Mark E. Smith. Yeah, who's a dear, dear favorite 
Um, I just think of a, a music in, in, in the van, like late at night. Music in right, the driving van. Driving through the desert. Fuck, yeah. the best, the best. Music in the van. The mixtape when you should be like changing strings on your guitar and all these things that you should be doing the night before you get in the van. Mm -hmm. And every single time I'd be making mixtape upon mixtape and like not packing clothes, not thinking about anything except imposing my musical taste on my friends which is what I basically kind of been doing since I was about 12. Really? And the mixtape was like the thing, you know? The mixtape was the thing, and then <laughs> cut to like digital days where we were in this, the coolest van ever where we were actually a Wi-Fi van, so everyone's making mixtapes in real time, mm -hmm. you know? Like like a lot older, <laughs> but yeah, it's like, like, just like, you know, I'm really into like the whole like Jamaican like DJ Clash thing. Like, you know, mm. you think, you know, here, Here's the baddest tune from 1968. No, fuck you, man. Boom. What about this? You know, so that kind of geeky mm. shit. Right. Yeah, but it's it's really about imposing your shit on people, and if you're in a band, it's you get to do it for 45 minutes straight. You right. Know? <laughs> you know? At least. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking of club days, right? The the 40 minute club set, which I still kind of miss. How do you do that? We did that with with, with uh, Under Our Sunshine. And that you, shit you're was doing like, it again in November. I know, and that shit was like. Talk about muscle memory. We did this, like, what is it, 40 minutes? 45? Yeah, 45. Yeah, we hadn't played in 45 minutes. I don't know how long since we, probably since then, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. And I swear to God, we didn't, hadn't played these songs played forever. Barry Electric. Yeah, right. we hadn't played these songs forever. We hadn't played a set that short. I thought it was going to be really constraining and really like, yeah. and I swear to God, there was, the, the my hand was just doing the chords automatically. I mean, I really, at one point, it was just completely it automatic. It was really, really loud. It was really loud. <laughs> it was really loud. There's this really great footage of us, Hack. and Stu's going, Heidi, I went, this is a bass, something about, like, do that thing. <laughs> and and you could just see me playing. I can't hear a thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I just keep playing. Do and that, that thing. thing. And that thing that you will never get from theater, unless you're really lucky, which is that those, you know, you know what I'm talking about, but audience people who are listening right now, there's this thing you'll never get in a Broadway theater, and that is those people in a club where you can see the effect that what you're doing is having. Mm. This is the only, to me, like all the other comparisons with music and sex are bullshit. But in a club, club playing is the closest thing to sex. You see, you hit a note, you do something, the drummer does something, the drummer does a roll, and you see it. Mm. You see it reflected in the face of the people who are looking at you. That is cool. That is why you need to form a band, listener. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it doesn't that doesn't happen in, in in theater that doesn't happen you don't even know if people like you in theater quite often really like some people have like this quiet and it's well, dark. Well, well people have watching 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 theater face which is sometimes like a mm -hmm. sneer <laughs> yeah and i walked up to that guy remember that time this guy had a sneer right and like during the show i used to go yeah. out off stage sometimes and fuck with yeah. people and i'm i just kind of looked at him like what do you and it turned out he, that was just his natural resting face. Yeah, it's so sad. He loved I mean, the show. Yeah, I get all different. And I went off stage in front of resting, these... resting bitch face. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I was trying to think of the phrase. I was trying resting to think of the phrase. Resting bitch face. And I was Even so... guys can have it. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. And I yeah. felt so bad because I, I basically walked off, yeah, off the stage while sad. we were. It's like, I know, it's like but I made like an assumption. People like to look at their programs. The club, right. They look at their programs yeah, and she's like, what are you looking at? First row. Nobody at a club is going to look at their fucking program and be sneering at you. First mm -hmm. row, they're going to be like, mm, I'm here. And like, that's theater, though, yeah, right? Yeah, get First really row. defensive for those people. You know? Yeah, but yeah. I don't like the reading the program. That's not cool. Yeah, but they're yeah. Who reads it? It's like reading your somebody reading your bio while you're fucking. It's like, what are you going to do? Like, let me read up on you while. <laughs> or like the, or when you accidentally see somebody yawning. Uh, right, 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 right. <laughs> that one kills me. That one, that one can, uh, that one can deflate me right away. Oh, In bed or on stage? I mean, both, I think. <laughs> You know, I mean, life's been hard oh, for me. God. Oh, God. Yeah, that's yeah, It's not an easy road, I tell you, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh, my God. So what are you guys working on now? What's the new thing? Oh, God, the new thing. There's like, well, we're really like uh, this series at, um, Just at, pub. At, at the pub is insane because we have all these shows that new yorkers haven't seen that we've mm -hmm. done like at kennedy center or uh oregon shakespeare festival uh in la shows that we haven't done here so we're really trying to like for a change not 
invent something new, but bring this stuff back to Mm -hmm. New York and say, yo, here's this show that you've never seen, you know? So just learning that shit and keeping it fresh on a, as she was saying, on a month to month basis is a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, uh, she's got a, a. She gets mad when I call in an opera. <laughs> I love what he says. I'm but she's opera. got an opera that she. You're wrote. working on an it's opera. No, opera. she's done with it. But it's, it's not it's, an opera. It just happened to be at a place that does like opera. opera but it sounds really. It's uh, called the Good Swimmer, and so and this is your project, or is it it's solo? my it's my little project. Yeah. And you might it, be it touring was, uh, that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of it's changing. I, it was something that was done at at um at Bam Next Wave this yeah. last December, and I, I did it with this librettist Donna Di Novelli. Is and, that uh, the director? Or? No, that's the librettist. See, see, it sounds really fancy she, she's she's fancy because she's a librettist because it's opera. Person well, who does the words. It, it sounds like it because that's like an opera person, right? <laughs> person you know, who does the words yeah, yeah. it's like a, instead of a, instead of lyricist yeah but it's a librettist a librettist sounds very you know <laughs> I gotta know, learn I, this shit Joseph I get it together I'm from Ohio you know <laughs> I never went to college it's like you I know never heard that it's word all either. coming out <laughs> librettist I know yeah that's wild proper opera oh, it's fancy opera. right so yeah so it's, it's fancy it's a, I call it an opera because nobody talks it, nobody uh, talks but it's even changing it's even more it's, it's pretty much a concert version of this it's it's gonna be in LA, like you know, in over a year. Yeah. Everything it's moves really new slowly. New songs, all like a leading in a sort of narrative kind of structure it's, to it, a story or something. Well, like it was, and now it's kind of going away. And it's and it's and it's and it's a bunch of songs from this that just kind of have an arc, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah. Is what yeah. with say. acting as well. No, no, no it's just songs. Just it's just songs. songs. And um um, and it's uh okay. It's songs that are written mostly, that's all found text, written mostly from the American Red Cross Life Saving Manual. Mm-hmm. I know it that, sounds really funny. That's funny. <laughs> it sounds funny, but yeah. it's not funny. You know, it's just kind of, right. it's it's meant to be kind of beautiful. But it's like, you know, it's like pop songs. There's yeah. nothing, yeah. there's nothing. All from the Red Cross Life Saving Manual. Exactly. <laughs> Every song. Every song. Mm, yeah, oh, no. mostly, Here's how you save mostly. a drowning man. Here's yeah. how you save yes. somebody. Here's yes. how not to try yes. to. Here, yeah. That type of thing? Yeah. That's yeah. a yeah. pretty yeah. great pretty cool. idea. That's pretty yeah. cool. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> what? So are, are you going to make an album of it as well? Yeah. Or? That's that's what's going to happen in the meantime. I have to try to figure out how to make an album. Right. Yeah. And we and that's our one of our things, too, is we want to bring these shows to New York one by one at Joe's Pub. Mm-hmm. And we want to. Uh, record them, you know, yeah. or possibly even record them live at Joe's Pub. You know, it's just a lot of stuff that we need to kind of update New Yorkers mm-hmm. on and also get together. We do a lot of stuff, but now we're trying to kind of stop for a second and like back up and like document this stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Because we got really lucky with like Passing Strange. Spike Lee was like, yeah, I'll shoot this thing. And we're like, I hate this idea that like doing theater and then working your ass off and then it just closes and then it's done it's like yeah. fuck that i'm not it's not documented yeah forget that so but we so got we got this amazing filmmaker to shoot all how this did, work how did spike come into the picture uh his wife told him he should come see it when it was closing at the public uh-huh. and he showed up and dug it and um bought us the largest bottle of he kept tastiest up. bottle of champagne I've ever. Who was had. he with at that show? I feel like he, he brought was with Wesley, like Snipes Wesley Snipes once to our show. Wow. Like, you know? It was just so like, dude. Have you it, seen Blade? I know, right? Well, you I know what's mean, amazing. I love Blade, dude. Well, what's amazing? What's amazing <laughs> about Blade is I like it too. But what's Who amazing is like we- Wesley it? Snipes is. I'm sorry. I hope Wesley never hears this, but Wesley is short for the guy that. All the movie stars seem to be exactly, mm-hmm. and like so. But Spike brought Wesley, but it was like it was so rock and roll because like Wesley's Wesley's life is pretty rock and roll, right? So mm-hmm. Wesley shows up backstage. I'm like, all right, this is cool, you know. And he completely related to like the play. It was like telling me all of his like old crazy theater stuff he used to do. Wesley was, yeah, he was all over it. He was he was a really cool guy, you know. And um, yeah, Spike just kept coming to and, see and the brought, show. And he brought um, Lenny Kravitz. He brought Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. Damn. So uh, I know I'm a fan studded. of Lenny too. So you know, it's like it's like we were like when we got to Broadway, it was like he kept coming, and we we're like, okay, we we have to uh, we got to close, we got to shoot this, and they were like, ask Spike, and like I know he'll Steve do it. Steve Klein, yes, yeah, Steve Klein. How'd you Klein. know he would do it? Cause he was coming so much to it. Yeah, I just kind of knew, and we had met and talked about stuff, and uh, 
he is a closet rock geek, you know, uh-huh. like. He and I related to a lot of stuff about like how like he always loved like uh, loved rock music, but you know there's always been like in African American communities of the age that I grew up in, mm-hmm. you know where I felt like the communities really kind of disowned rock and roll, especially disowned their place in it, or you know? felt disowned by it. Yeah, maybe. one of the yeah, depending on how you feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, you consciously, people consciously. I mean, we could do a whole podcast on the african-american response for instance to like hendrix right and how i don't feel like i don't i feel like you know there was a closed-mindedness that like because he was behaving like this crazy black guy that they yeah. like the weird nephew white, white aspects to, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah in yeah. white culture yeah, being yeah. prominent in white culture yeah, yeah. i guess or yeah yeah not that it's white culture but you know yeah what I'm yeah i do say. know what you mean but i feel yeah. like we should have been more uh Embracing. engaged yeah and, and knowledgeable and that we've actually like you know little richard you know yeah. this stuff is not new you know no, it's um, not. you know no. so anyway though the point being that like for 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 spike he related to that aspect of the show and related to that aspect of the you know he um you know he's a total rock freak he, in fact when he he asked me to write this uh, anti trump song which was really hard for me to do cuz i told him i can't mention the guy's name I'll write a song about how it feels to be alive right now, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to write a song about Trump. And after begging me to write the song, I finally said, I'll write it. And then he texts me, he goes, I'm thinking like something like, you know, like the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, you know? And I promise you, not a lot of people would think that Spike Lee would recommend, like suggest as an in, as an influence for a song, a Gordon Light. He doesn't seem like the guy, yeah, yeah. you know, Gordon but like he, yeah. yeah, but he's a complete fucking pop rock. That's you interesting. Know? Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. So point being, um, uh, you know, we, we just felt very lucky to have him on 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 board to document oh, that's that. That's incredible. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty. It was pretty and, cool. And is where is that available for people? Everywhere you Amazon, yeah, Amazon. Um, well, Netflix. And that or? was yeah. It was on. It was on his show on Netflix. It was oh. for his for his. Uh, oh, you're talking about. Oh, wait, well, I'm sorry. About clown. What you, oh, 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 oh. The the the, the, the passing strange. I'm is, talking about passing strange. Oh, oh, God, is, is, sorry, is Amazon. Okay. Is Amazon and um. I wasn't listening. If you want to see uh, on, his. I mean, my mind was wandering. If you want to see, uh, Steve, uh, sometimes when Steve's talking, I'm going like, you know, this. she's been around me for a while now. You know, yeah. she nods off every once in a while. Uh, 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 okay, okay. Passing Strange is, is I think it's Amazon. Amazon. I think it's on Amazon. Yeah, and then uh, Spike's that. new Spike's new show. She's got to have it. We're in season one that of Trump this. Song uh, is Trump song one. is like first season, uh-huh. but we're on the episode of the season first episode of season two. Yeah, we're actually um, playing on the second. On the second yeah, second. we're actually featured, folks. If you look at Spike Lee's, uh, what's uh, the song called? Sh- the song that's uh, the second one. Oh, the first one is is Clown. With yeah, the nuclear uh, code. Clown with the Nuclear Code is in last seasons, and I forget which episode that is. And then this season, we're in the first episode doing two songs um, about Brooklyn. Maybe there, maybe, maybe there's black there's people black in Fort Greene. Is is and is, is uh, and That's Brooklyn funny. Omnibus? Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's supposed to be. <laughs> that is. But so so were you a Hendrix fan? Oh my God! Yeah, I mean like you I mean, me too. Like yeah. I had a posters on my wall. He Tol- was my hero. Like a hero, poster hero worship question. vibes from me. Poster yeah. without question. I used to think I was reincarnated from Hendrix because <laughs> I was born September twenty eighth, nineteen seventy one. He died September eighteenth, nineteen seventy. <laughs> okay, so deal. it seemed like a year There's and ten there. days. Yeah, yeah, that fits. That fits. I yeah. made a connection that works. with that. that I was works. like, you know what? A year and ten days. That's about how long it would take. <laughs> yeah, yes, makes yes, sense. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was enough. It would yeah. take to do what? To like reincarnate, <laughs> you know. Oh, okay, it's like a got year it, and ten it, day gestation, yeah, gest- whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 It seemed yeah, like yeah. about right. Like yeah. for you'd want to hang there's out. There's some numerological. You want to hang out in heaven in for a ether. bit, yeah. like you know, like yeah. let me like fly around for totally. a second. <laughs> totally. Like let me mess with Eric Clapton. Let me right, sp- right, just, right. let me spook him out. Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. Go fuck with George Harrison. Exactly. You know, and then I'm gonna go ahead and become Joseph Arthur. It just makes a lot of sense. Totally, totally, totally. You're not the first I've met. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't anywhere near good enough guitar player to fill that, but I did. Um, I remember once my mom, just like in Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing, I remember my mom was literally like, 
why don't you have any black people on the wall? And I had a huge poster of Hendrix, and I said, what about him? And she goes, That's, he's I don't not mean, black. Yeah, she goes, I don't mean him. I mean, like, black Other, people. And I was wow. like, wow. This that's is my point. Like, that's a great, that, yeah, because I want you to kind of say more about this, because this is I interesting I had a giant me. poster. I mean, like, it couldn't have been yeah, bigger. The one with the fucking cords coming out of his head? That no, one? No, no, no. This was one, one where I mean, he was, it was like. was giant, dude. This was, uh, I think he was, like, burning the guitar or something. Right. I think it was some monoration or something. I had a giant one, right? right. Gi- like the one with the cords coming all out of his. I head. know what you're talking yeah, about. I, know what you're t- I had that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I was just like, there he is. You know, he right. couldn't be more himself. Right. And I'm like, uh, I'm sorry. It's doesn't like count. this yeah. is the big. No, he doesn't count. Yeah. And that that to me is like that's this wild. thing. Yeah, but that's the thing that we all, you know, me and my friends in in middle, what you East Coast people call middle school, and what we <sighs> call junior high school. Right. We used to listen only to the music we liked if we were flanked by this guy about 6'2 in, in junior high named David Morgan who was a football player mm-hmm. and we would bring the portable cassette and we would, whoever brought whatever Zeppelin Bowie mm-hmm. whatever if we listen to that without 6'2 David Morgan flanking us we would get our ass kicked that's wild in, our, in my school and I loaned a kid because it was not white boy music. It was, it was white, white boy, boy music. music. Boom, white boy music. And Never that, mind that everybody who, if they came over my house, yeah, they always liked it. Yeah, if they were over my house, they always liked it. But you, this was a social situation, yeah. right? You couldn't be seen, you know. And I remember loaning a guy Rise and Fall of uh, uh, Ziggy Stardust, yeah. and I loaned it to him, the album. And then we got on the bus, and then like two stops later, like four Crips got on the bus, and said, "Yo, what? You know, like, what is that?" And then they pulled the record up, and he goes, "Oh, this is some white boy faggot shit." And I'm sitting across, I'm thinking, <laughs> "Oh no, this guy's about to get his ass kicked." I mean, he's not I'm wrong. About- yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah you're not he was wrong. accurate. I mean- <laughs> he, was, he was accurate. But I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like I'm, I'm almost pissing my pants because like I'm about to watch my friend get the shit beat out because a record that I loaned him. Right. And, and do I have to jump in? And you know what I mean? And like, did you jump in? No, grace of God, man! A woman stood up and said, "You bad boy, stop messing with that and young that man just because he." Well, they, she was an adult. She probably was like 20, but she looked right. adult enough, you know, because we, we were, you know, yeah. kids. But by the way, God. the way you d- did that, she, she was a senior citizen in my exactly, mind. Exactly, exactly. Like totally. 80 my life, too. Yeah. yeah, I know. And then she went from t- 80 to 20. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she was 20. And then it got me 20. confused. I was yeah. like, wait, now I'm attracted. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and that was just like, that was that was our that was our life. But then nobody would like come over my house on the yeah. weekend and listen to it and be like, this is bullshit. Because I mean, like, especially like, I can remember like, you know, like those records, especially like when, you know, like, I knew this guy who always said, like, Chris Chris Carter used to say, everything was funky in the 70s. Like, like Southern rock was funky. Mm-hmm. Rush was, but Rush was Rush funky. Rush was funky. Everything like, was, was funky. funky. Right, no, you they know are. What I mean? They were. Like, they, they were. were. Like, they were. Like, like, everything was. And, yeah. and, and the guys that turned me on to music were yeah. black guys in my church. Yeah. Who turned me on to Black Sabbath? Who turned uh, me on to all this shit? They, they were, are funky. Yeah, Black Sabbath. Yeah, no, they were church guys. I remember yeah. the first guy that said to me, a guy that played bass in my church, and he said, yeah. "Black Sabbath ha- groove," you know. And oh, I, was like, I was like, I was, I yeah. was at the at that age, I was like, I didn't even get it because I just thought this is just heavy metal, right? I wasn't really listening, you know. Right. But he was like, "Of course they do," and like, so mm-hmm. that was the whole thing. It's like, so, it wasn't like people hated black people hated that music. They didn't publicly there was this weird thing it was right. like being gay or something yeah. you know you had to pretend don't ask yeah you know don't tell anyone well, you, you had to be in the closet with it you had to completely be in that's the closet. so funny Cause yeah the opposite in, you know when i was in high school wasn't true because every like i was got into like public enemy it takes a nation of millions right. to right, right, back right, right. And nwa straight right. out of compton like right. when that landed on me like right when i was like in my like 11th 12th grade or what, okay you know okay. What I mean? yeah, yeah maybe yeah. even younger and it was like no you didn't have to hide the fact that everybody was into that that's what, amazing even yeah. white, white people in ohio yeah yeah you know? yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so yeah. it's interesting yeah and i envy kids now because they can just everybody can basically listen to everything i mean i walked into a footlocker in times square about three years ago and there's this like the craziest most eclectic fucking sound track for a store mm-hmm. like just it was just all over the map yeah 
And I'm like, okay, these fucking marketing guys must be really smart. They know old farts like me are coming in, so they're like, it was just like cool punk rock, and then it would go into this funk stuff. And I go up to this kid, this black kid who couldn't have been more than like 19. I'm like, where's this music from? And he goes, I made this. Wow. And I'm like, what? All of these songs are older than you. And like, how did you find, I mean, it yeah. was literally something that yeah. you and I would like, it was like, right. it was down. It was, yeah. it was a really fucking down mixtape. Yeah. And he fucking made it. And we talking like for a half hour in a footlocker in Times Square about like weird old punk rock shit, you know? And I'm nice. like, okay, I envy you. And you get to wear Vans, a punk rock belt yeah. and, and a biggie shirt right. and then spiked hair. It's like, I would have been killed yeah. with any one of those Things. accoutrements. <laughs> and they get to be into like West Coast surf. All of it. Yeah, they get to yeah. skate culture, punk rock, rap, everything. And I'm yeah. like, I wish. It's crazy did. how long lasting these cultural things are. Like you didn't know. Like if somebody would have told you back in the 80s, hey, Sylvester Stallone <laughs> in 2019 is still... <laughs> gonna be the biggest action movie star <laughs> around you'd be like get the fuck out of here like so it doesn't matter that he's it's gonna so be in his 70s it's sylvester stallone the guy so currently true. the biggest guy now in two like yes 40 years from now yes is still like yes, that's, that's, uh, it's just yes. weird it's like <laughs> How is there not another one? I mean, there are, you know, like, it's just odd the way these things are much yeah. more long lasting than I think, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People for sure. think they're going to be. Yeah, I think, I think like, you kind of invent something and then that's what it just sticks. Like, yeah. just like there's kind of no, there's not really <laughs> another, like, is there another Velvet Underground? Is no. There an, you know, what I mean, is there is there a you know is, is, these mm-hmm. things just happen and then they go away and then hopefully something else. There happens. ain't another Stu Stewart either. Uh, there we're cloning as we speak. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, do you believe in the simulation theory that we're in a simulation? You mean like that Bourgeois guy, the French guy? I don't know who he is, oh, but there's, simulation. This is a simulation. We're, of we're, our reality, like this, what we perceive as reality is actually a simulation. That we're li- you even heard that yet? Well, no, that's very, what I'm saying because that's just French theorist guy. Oh, maybe you're even Jean Baudrillard who talks about simulation, but oh, I, I never bothered to figure out. I just what he was I talking heard about. like Elon Musk talk about it on Joe Rogan's <laughs> podcast, so <laughs> okay. that's where I'm referencing. Okay, so it so enlighten us. <laughs> like a little, yeah. So little, this is not happening right now. Well, no, it's happening, but it's a simulation, of, and 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 actually, like the people that are like theorize about the simulation is that that the idea is um if you believe that eventually like virtual reality will get to a place where it's indistinguishable from reality Uh which if you believe that will ever happen Uh then therefore the likelihood that this isn't already a simulation is like one in billions be- oh, okay. Because okay. to think that we're just magically living in the first right. orientation of the reality right. is like, you know, very less likely than the fact that we are already living in a simulation just for the ver- virtue of the fact that once we hit a point where, you know, planet sized computers can make s- living simulations that are indistinguishable from reality. There will be m- millions of versions of us living millions of versions of simulated life. So it's one in billions that this is actually like our first reality. Wow. Like what, I first, love, wow. what I love, what I want, it's yeah. it's yeah, mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and that's not the thing I believe necessarily, right. but it's fun to think about shit like mm-hmm. this. Well, yeah. what I love is that a guy can go on a podcast like Elon Musk, who I'm just yeah. learning about, yeah. and that. Basically, that like 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 1971 acid trip yeah. speak yeah. can now work its way. Like that is just such a 1971 acid speak <laughs> yeah. thing to say. Yeah, <laughs> and I think it's great that that, that didn't die. Right, that speak is now. <laughs> oh no, that speak is bigger than ever, <laughs> it's dude. Bigger than ever. No, nah, that speak is that speak is coming with a vengeance, at. dude. That is where we we are living in the perpetual acid trip. I don't know if you haven't noticed that or not, but this life is getting trippier and trippier. Tis. All the time. It is. It is. It is. You know? Without question. No, without question. It and is. you know. And I mean, I teach, man. I'm, I'm, I'm where, around twenty year olds. Where do you teach? A lot. Uh, Sarah Lawrence and the New School. Amazing. How? What do you teach? Uh, Sarah Lawrence. I teach a theater class that talks about 
how to make theater from music rather yeah. than from straight narratives. How to make theater from me. Like we did, basically. I want to take your class. Come on I've been tempted to make this podcast your class. I, you probably could tell. <laughs> Come on like, This motherfucker's trying to get a free lesson out of me, dude. <laughs> Come on up. Come on up to Sarah anytime, any yeah. Monday. And New School, I, I, I try to get people to just like be more detailed and descriptive in their songwriting. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, to basically do things that it's a songwriting class, but it's not a how to write songs. Mm-hmm. All of my students are songwriters already. Right. So we just basically shoot the shit about songwriting and I try to play them stuff that I think is cool and get them to like, you know, be as cool as Lou Reed or Bob Dylan. You know? Yeah. And a lot of them are, are pretty amazing. Yeah. I know. There's a lot of really talented people in this world. Yes. 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 That's spooky in and of itself. Yes. 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 And that you know. some of them will be like, have written like really great songs and be like, yeah, I'm just doing this now and I'm going to be like, like a forensic right. scientist. And I'm like, wait a minute. If I knew you, if I knew anybody yeah. like you in 20 and when I was 20, you'd be like, oh no, I'm, I'm going head up straight up in the music. Yeah. But they're like, yeah, I've written like, uh, you know, 20 great songs, yep. but I'm going to be a forensic yeah. scientist. And they're not wrong. Cause they're it's not like, wrong at all. It's they're different than it was. But I mean, still, it was a miracle back when we were coming up because back when we were coming up, it it was like you could make a cassette and if you magically got a record deal <laughs> maybe other people would hear it that was the the end by yes. the way the end yes you're like otherwise 10 of your friends are going to hear your right. like creations right, right other right, than right. that that's it so right. it was like still like a big leap of faith like people right. kind of forget that it was yeah. you know but yeah. it, but it's even more like just glutted all the you know totally. like you know and it's totally. it's it's difficult to have a what do you think about making a career in the arts and do you guys have like a I heard this new phrase called tramp phobia like where you could still become a tramp do you suffer from tramp phobia what does that mean it I haven't I, like, I'm realizing I haven't spoken broke. much you be that you could someday. be broke like I, I like I'm just gonna oh, raise my oh. hand and say I s- sometimes suffer from a little bit of what I just heard yesterday a new phrase tramp phobia I don't know I might even be making that phrase up <laughs> But it's my, the name Copyright. of my new musical. It's like you're scared. Tramphobia. You're, you're scared you're gonna have no money like, all of a sudden. Is yeah, that what it means? Yeah. Well, and oh. you're gonna yeah, like because the life of an artist is one based on faith. Yeah, but I think that's kind of our thing. That's why we started playing. Like that's what we had in common mm-hmm. is we were ready to like just like do this even if you know everything fell apart. You know, yeah. which it could have yeah. the whole time, which it kind of did. And, you know, I mean, that's what your connection that, was. That's what that's that's what I think made us. Uh, start playing together because we were both uh, we were we were both able to get in a van and drive yeah. and 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 if it broke down we wouldn't have anything to you know back, back, yeah 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 you know? It, it, yeah it's, it's kind of a weird way to live but i feel like the one thing reason why i teach actors that they need to start learning how to write songs is because it's the only thing that i know where you can kind of like do it if i have to go out on a corner and play some fucking shit and put a head to I will. And I know my shit's going to be better than 90% of the motherfuckers that are on the street. I mean, mm-hmm. I, or at least I need to feel that way in order to get out there because mm. it sounds like a nightmare. But I mean, I need to feel like if it really came to that, if like, you know, depression era, whatever hits and things go haywire, we have this one weird thing mm-hmm. that so far the simulation or the or the or the virtual i mean it'll, maybe it'll get there this I don't version know. of the simulation yeah, right, right, we right, have right. this thing right mm-hmm. but but actually <laughs> watching somebody sing a song i watched a magician okay i was really drunk and i found myself in times square after one of those um uh, i won't say the name was but, it chris angel or david blaine it was neither. I'm just kidding i know it was <laughs> uh, after i won't i won't mention our producer friend who every time we meet with him we get Shit face drunk. You know who I'm talking about, though. Uh, pr- like just she, accidentally say his name. She's gonna say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't say. It. <laughs> I know. I anyway, will, you know me, Josh. Anyway, suddenly I, I'm. Is it Josh? <laughs> I tried to read her lips, and I was gonna, I was gonna it's put her on Josh. blast. It's suddenly Josh. I'm in Times Square, and mm. I hate Times Square. By the way, Broadway made me hate Times Square. Yeah. I hate the crowds. I, hate, I am like stumbling drunk in like the fucking bright lights of. Yeah. 12 midnight Times Square. Yeah, and that's I'm just, terrible. Yeah, and it's like, I can't even hide. I'm just like, really? And I stop because I'm so drunk, I have to stop. Mm-hmm. And there's this just doofus magician. And I watch him, and I'm so drunk, and I'm like, you know, it's one of those moments where, you know, if it was a, like a underground Jackie Gleason movie, you'd be crying like, this is great! Oh, yeah. This is fucking great! 
know, he's a fucking magician, you know? And I was just like loving, it really made me like, you can go on the street mm -hmm. and do yeah. something, yeah. you know, if, if you have to. I mean, it was so weird. It was sad, of course. There's something sad about a magician on the fucking street, but it was also like, he was getting play. But it was the perseverance of the human spirit. And he was getting some play. Uh-huh. Folks were, ladies were like, kind of, you know, the, uh. and he was working that angle too. And it was just like, yeah. And he was pulling shit out of his fucking, out of the air. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, not bad. I mean, there's worse, there's worse. You know, there's absolutely fucking worse. Yeah. So the music thing for me is just like going back to that thing. It's like fucking Robert Johnson used to go into a club of black folks and he was the dance music. A lot right. of people don't realize that. It yeah. wasn't like people going, I'm listening to Robert Johnson. I'm having a fine time. Oh, right. He would go into a, with a club face. with a fucking, yeah, with yeah. a fucking <laughs> guitar mm -hmm. and black people who had been working all day would dance to him. How the fuck did he do that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To dance to him, right? I mean, I mean, not just like listening, mm -hmm. but dancing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that must have been a hard job. I mean, that must have been probably, a, uh, you know, and they would, he would have to play until they stopped dancing. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like we've been doing that for a long time. Right. And we might just have to do that again. Yeah. I mean, and so that's why tramp phobia. Yeah, I think every fucking, um, you've read, you've read like people like fucking Stephen Sondheim has fears about someday people are going to think he's a, a, a fraud. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, he's, yeah. you think he'd have a secure spot <laughs> and a secure mind. Right. But if he still thinks there's a chance that he's a fraud, then. We all should in some way. Yeah. You know, and whether we whether we should or not, that's not the point. The point is everybody should have tramp phobia. Yeah. I mean, I, th I kind of think everybody should because who the fuck is like, <laughs> who who's is secure? Who's bulletproof? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not so sure. Yeah. I feel like we don't, we don't change. We're the same people we were when we were trying to figure out how to, um, you know, play play two two times in one month and like what kind of show to put on and stuff and i mean like we're, we're nothing has changed even though we have all this success you know yeah nothing it has changed still... and 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 i th i think there's good and bad about that like nothing has changed like i still suck at <laughs> computers and social media <laughs> like yeah. I, well, you, I you mean... said on the podcast with kevin griffin i don't know who you quoted that success isn't final uh well it's in my boxing gym right. no success is final <laughs> yeah uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Well, how did you come up with the name the Negro problem? What's that mean? Oh god. Um you don't have to answer. Oh no, happy to answer. Yeah. We okay. uh I was just, you know, thinking about an, a name. Always liked the rough, crazy, weird names. Velvet Underground, you know, Dead Kennedys, Strawberry mm -hmm. Alarm Clock. I always liked the names that kind of, you know, Something jumped out a little bit. A little Jum bit. Yeah, jumped out. Yeah. And so um, you know, the Negro problem is a phrase that I had heard about you know, first used to by European missionaries to describe the absence of Christianity in Africa. Mm. So in other words, we have this, the Negro problem is the lack of Christianity, so we gotta work that out. Mm. Then later on, people like, uh, you know, uh, Lyndon LBJ uh, used it to describe uh, the situation in, you know, in ghetto life for disenfranchisement, black disenfranchisement. So the, t the terms have been used. Booker T. Washington used the word, you know. Um, it's been used a lot. So I'm just like, I got to use this word, you know. And I got to use this phrase. And my band, who was all white at the time, <laughs> were like, uh, okay, really? It's like, and uh, they all laughed though so hard. I'm like, you guys are laughing that means it must be a good name because mm -hmm. you guys are a little bit scared of it but you're all laughing like do you really want to do this mm -hmm. and the best negro problem story is yeah uh, there's got to be some good ones no 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 no, no. in terms I, of the, people the, the, responding to yeah. that name oh yeah no no yeah. but the, but the <laughs> yeah. best one is doesn't involve me it's well the best one is when the uh NAA, uh Idaho? NAACP. The, NAACP it, it, yeah, threatened to pro. It was in, the, uh, it was in but Iowa. But the best oh one God. was in you guys, Mississippi. Oh, we, we were in, no, we were in Birmingham. Birmingham. We were in Birmingham, and you had a toothache right. or something. There's some reason why you couldn't make the sound check. Right. And so, like, all the white people had to show up. To the sound and it check. said. And it's the Negro problem. Yeah, but I think yeah. we were touring <laughs> under <laughs> Stu then. That's, that's right. what's weird. Right. And it said the that's Negro funny. problem. Yeah, and it was just like, well, that's great. And then they great. thought you were racist. Right, right. Like, skinheads. <laughs> skinheads, skinheads showing up. Oh, know? really? We see that all the time. Oh, my God. There were places yeah. that wouldn't book us. There right. Were places wow. that there was I was going to ask about that. Like, Remember the Mint? You, you, I don't know if you ever played the oh, Mint yeah, in LA. I know the, the Mint, mint in LA, would yeah. not 
Yeah. That was my neighborhood. That was my neighborhood. They wouldn't book you. They wouldn't book us. The only people in the beginning in L.A. that would book us were actually people that had a sense of irony. Um, there was like, and usually they were foreigners, so to mm-hmm. speak. You know, people that were not born in the United States. Yeah. Club, you know, club people that would book us. But uh, yeah, it was um, it was initially hard, but at the same time, it was good because I think like the nation mentioned us like yeah. the group because and they would have definitely never mentioned us if we had not been called but we had shows like canceled at the last minute and, and one was at um i want to say one was in boston and one was in boston definitely that makes t- sense tt tt and the bears i put tt and the bears tt and the bears banned us in the last minute and thanks just because of the name yeah middle east picked up no someone someone booked us someone booked us at teaching the bears the owner got back from vacation and we're like on the road saw the name and we're like in the van, right, heading for the east. And the owner says, "No, I'm not having them here." Why? What was the reason? I mean, obviously, okay. I wish I would, no. I wish you would. I wish we would have been internet days. We could have, you know. The name asked him. has the je ne sais quoi of controversy. <laughs> I will grant right, him right, that, but right. it's certainly not like hateful or any kind of weird. Hey, thing. man. It's I mean, like, like you know. Yeah. I mean, is it maybe that's how no, he perceived it? No, it ain't. No, I don't. I th- I think it's a quaint. Like my my relatives, yeah. like my my relatives, the word Negro to my nieces and nephews was like this archaic Shakespearean yeah. term you know they weren't freaking on it at all and especially you shouldn't be freaking on it if you've got NWA right or like Dead Kennedys which to me still is the most provocative you know yeah. name ever right yeah you're right yeah. but it's but, like doesn't even ring like that anymore no 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 amazing. yeah that's yeah, so funny yeah you're, yeah yeah you're, but you're no really, we had really yeah, right. yeah but people were people would um people would really really trip off of it for very very strange reasons but um it did it did it's job i yeah. mean it did its job it did the job and um but yeah so well that was a that was a great gig at middle east because harvard uh radio picked up on the band uh-huh. and you know the holy music even though it's technically cambridge the whole band in boston has a nice ring so they basically talked about it the djs talked about mm-hmm. it so we we drew more people at yeah. middle east than we would have ever drawn had they not um made us stink about it so yeah it it, it all kind of worked, worked for out you better yeah than... it all kind of worked out and i mean i wonder about these times because shockingly enough um these times feel way more sensitive than they did you know 15 years ago absolutely so, so we'll see um we'll see yeah. i yeah. mean so far so good exactly, but yeah. so yeah, far so good it is weird so when you joined the band, you learned all the songs like on your own, right? Like, didn't you like? Oh yeah, it was really, really hard. Yeah, because <laughs> it was like, like a, that, that first record's like you, prog rock. You, I mean. And you wanted to, uh, you were so in love with the band, you were like, I have to be in this band. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the first time I've ever really, really tried hard. Like, I want this, <laughs> and I'm getting in your in. Life? Yeah, I think so. Because I feel like I just like my first band I stumbled into, and I'm, you uh. know, and it was great, and we toured, and I loved it. But I, but I like, I, I lied. That first band I was in Wednesday week, I said I played bass and I didn't, and I just right. did, you know. Yeah. And um, because I played other stuff, I, you know, I, I grew up playing, you know, piano and I played the oboe and I played different things. So, would you go so to picking a up pawn a bass shop and buy a bass real quick. I had like my boyfriend's bass <laughs> yeah. at the time. I think I bought it from him for a hundred dollars. Yeah. It was actually really cool. I had, my first bass was a. I've ever told you this too. It was like a hollow body Gibson, and on the back of it, it had like an eagle painted on it. Wow. And I was told that it was, you know, it's always like a lie. I was told that it was um, the birds. Um, really? Yeah. Why and, you and, and, true. and you know, it's yeah. LA. It probably was. And then, I, and then, of course, I gave it. You know, who knows where what happened to it? it feels it, like a magical base in know? this story. Like and it, I, it was that base <laughs> that like led your whole life. Right. The bird is like a bird of freedom flying <laughs> you into a bold new reality in this simulation. But I didn't know what I was doing, and I just faked my way into it. And so it was. And that band was great because it was really like we're just doing this, and and you know, we we toured around and we had a record deal, and you know. It was the early days of MTV and stuff. Right. And so when I joined Stu's band, it was like, oh, my God, now I have to actually, like, you know, Try. listen to these bass parts and yeah. see if I could <laughs> fake it, you know? So it was like that. And that first album, when I listened to it, it's like, yeah, I don't know how I how I um, made that happen, you know? <laughs> I'm very proud of myself. Yeah. That is a gangster move. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's um, important to lie. Yeah. I tell my students that it all is. the time. Oh, yeah? Say yes. Yeah. Well, they, you know, they, I, I lied to get this 
Musical. thing with the public theater. You know? Yeah. So it's important because really there's not much that if you're an artist, there's not really much. I feel like they're all very connected. Like yeah. it's not like being a doctor. I mean, if you do brain surgery, that doesn't mean you can take out a kidney right yeah. but uh i feel like if you write probably songs, though really if you in a push you know in a pinch in a pinch i can rock this kidney i mean i come into the general area let me just like cut around just give here. me a scalpel yeah scalpel please i know what these let's, veins let's mean let's do this uh, like you know what i'm feeling lucky well that's what i'm feeling about i'm art, feeling see? lucky and the guy's already asleep so right, right, you right. know i mean and he's not like, gonna wake up before i run out you know <laughs> That's oh, how I shit, feel about I art. Left the scalpel in there. Fuck. <laughs> That's how I feel yeah. about art. It's, yeah. it's 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 surgery. Right. Nobody dies, and it's and well, and some you can... people do. <laughs> <laughs> we won't mention any names. Yeah, no. But no, you know, no. I I feel like it's I feel like it's connected. That that's what I tell mm. them. That the I feel like rock and roll is actually a branch of theater. Yeah. Because anytime someone's getting out on a fucking stage. And and it's and making theater. people it's theater making people listen it's theater so you're right yeah I feel like it's all pretty much connected you know it's um yeah I just don't I just don't see it I I can't afford to see it any other way because otherwise I would have been scared as hell to do this yeah you know so it's just why not no one's going to get hurt if you try something different you know yeah no one's actually going to be hurt you know uh it might be a little painful but it's not gonna you know you're not just a teeny bit though. But I just think it's fun to like, also like rock and roll. I feel like, like the Beatles were just like, who like set sort of like examples for all of us in some way. Mm -hmm. The Beatles like, okay, we're the Beatles now. What do we do now? Let's just make a movie. Right. We don't know. Let's just be in a movie now. Yeah. You know, let's just, you know, let's just do, you know, I mean, that's animated just, film. Yeah, let's just, we got to do something, you know, so yeah. let's just make a movie now, you know. And I feel like it's really interesting when you talked about Bowie. It is interesting that he never... He never made the leap. It's really interesting. It's really weird because it's, it's, it's right there. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. It's like it's not that far off. But, yeah. But, but I haven't made the leap either. Not that I've had nearly the success Bowie had, but still, that's no excuse. But I, I, it's got to be... Know, and, you know, what but you, it's it's this block. It's a block, I'm telling you. It's people... But it's I think it's people making us think the, that it's a different form. art form. Right. <laughs> It isn't. It isn't. It just isn't. And the irony but is... But here's where it is, if if, if I'm allowed to ask please. the teacher a, qu a question. And I'm not <laughs> saying that in any kind of... Sarcastic. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. I'm not genuinely saying that. Um, which is... Yeah, you, but you do have to have some kind of narrative and then, like, the characters. That's the, dis the difference. Like, Bruce Springsteen made it to where it's, like... Yeah, it's really not different. It's, like, it's basically elongated storytelling. And mm -hmm. then that's, like... Leap number one, I think. Whereas mm -hmm. you brought in characters and right. did have dialogue and stuff like right. that, so right. that right. is a significant leap into another form. Yes, but you, but you and you rooted it around the songs and you kept it abstract, which was yes. also liberating. Yes, yeah, yeah. So those yeah. are the key elements, I guess. But, yeah, yeah. But so how how would you make that even more liberating? What would you say? Like, well, like, I'm just how saying, is it not even more not different than I'm thinking it is. Well, I'm saying that in rock and roll, for instance, you always look for what you need, right? Mm -hmm. If you want your band to change, you know, you look at, you know, Talking Heads, you go, okay, I want, suddenly David Byrne woke up one day and said, I want to bring guys from P-Funk into this band, you know, I want to bring another bass player, I want, you know, you bring in what you need, somebody says, hey, the doors say we need a saxophone solo, so we bring a saxophone player in, if you are making theater, bring in somebody who you trust, who you believe in, who understands rock and roll, and who right? can write some words, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe some narrative, yeah, bring in what you need, that's a D good fucking point, but I mean, bring in a real deal person, mm -hmm. not an expert in the form, but somebody who you actually, you know, feel understands what you're doing mm. see the reason why she and i work well together is because we grew up listening to the same shit literally the same radio stations you know trying to see the same bands you know this weird mix of like i say with punk rock and soul and psychedelic all this stuff so, so you got to find somebody who but that's what you do in bands you don't get right. somebody in your band that you don't like yeah. that doesn't understand you you get people that understand you yeah and to me, that's what you do with, with, with collaborator in a theater piece. It's no different. Did you, know? you have a collaborator with the narrative in your piece? Or? No, no, no. I mean, I was lucky enough where I was able to, you know. You but that. I was able to, like, bounce it off of Heidi. 
Yeah. And the director. The director yeah. didn't know anything about rock and roll. And you would listen to the songs and go, where can this story go when I frame yeah. these two songs? And yeah, what, yeah. What, and like insert the narrative pieces between the songs in a yes, set list yes, type of yes, thing? Yes, yes, yes. And she yeah. would basically was the person who would be able to say, which you have to have, is somebody who's going to say, this is working and this is bullshit. Because mm-hmm. see, most and people- that. Well, that was her. Heidi. Yeah, so I'm saying yeah, somebody would be Annie, like, Annie, Dorsen, Annie, also. no, but, yeah, the, but, but, but Annie didn't know anything about rock and roll. That's right, right, right. And right. Annie was great with theater. Right, right. But you would be yeah. like, eh, you know, this is getting a little too corny. You know how rock right. people have the yeah, cynic, that healthy, yeah, taste, taste and that healthy, healthy cynicism, cynicism, you know, yeah. cynicism, that a lot of, unfortunately, theater people don't have, you right. know? So she'd be like, eh, it's getting a little too this here, it's getting a little too that, it's getting a little too sentimental. And I'm like, oh, yeah, reminding you where you come from. Because I believe in great rock and roll songwriting can do and has done for me what any great songwriting in musical theater has done and for me more. Mm-hmm. So that's where I come from. That's what I believe in. You know, there was somebody, there was somebody once who uh, one of my spies showed me a blog after we were on the Tony Awards show. And they were like, it was a theater, inside theater professionals. And they were totally hating on us, you know, because oh, we had just won. Guy, we had just won yeah, the Tony, yeah. and, and for best book. And they were like watching our performance, and they go, "I just don't understand the point of someone screaming it's all right over and over again." Because there's this one song where you say, "Yeah, it's all right," and we just keep mm-hmm. doing it like you right. do in a rock show. In a rock song. And they didn't understand the point of that. And right. I'm like, "That's what you." You don't want that collaborator. Right. You don't want that guy in the room who's just just right. say it's all right about eight times and then yeah. we'll be done. Yeah. We would say it fucking forty times until we felt like cueing the band to stop. Yeah. And that's the difference. You need that person, you know. Right. And and that's who you know she was. Well, we were we were we were old enough to not like listen to people going. Well, you know no, what? But sometimes, in theater, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. You know we were like, <laughs> yeah, why? but so, you know? yeah, but sometimes yeah. you can get. That's where Annie was brilliant. She knew that yeah. sometimes you can be in a foreign world mm-hmm. and they can sway you without you even being realizing you're, because they're, they're smart. So they can yeah. sway you and make you not realize. But if you have somebody who's like, nah, you know. Right, right. And we have the references, you know. I mean, we're like, you know, sometimes we would just be like, you know, nobody would understand except me and her. would be like, nah, this is more like a, like a Bowie, like, laughing gnome kind of thing you know Mm -hmm. what i mean and me and her would (laughs) at least would know what we're talking about you know and that's enough you know if you're in a room and nobody knows what the fuck you know moon age daydream is you're fucked right if nobody else in that room understands that reference you are fucked right because you got no place to go yeah but if you were if one other person does and they're in yeah. your band yeah. i think you're good well, it's like if the band laughs then everything's band, fine exactly. and that's all you want is the exactly. band to get it no it's really it's, right. yeah that's really yeah. that's huge though that's really huge because otherwise you're lost yeah. yeah if the band laughs would be a good name for y'all's autobiography <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> that's true that's a good that's a good that's a good the title band, it is, the it band is, it is, is all is. jaded we and weird and yeah <laughs> yeah I just love the broken candle. I'm sorry. That's like stage direction. That's like yeah. East Village. It looks, yeah. It looks, <laughs> like, no, this right here, the yeah, broken no, candle. Uh, it's I, yeah. just broken just enough where the person was like, oh, okay, maybe nobody will notice. But Well, yeah, I put that there. <laughs> and I and I did <laughs> contemplate it. I said, you know what? It's like, the little I was like, dangerous if somebody bumps the table, there. though, like, it's, yeah, I left the dangerous glass. Awesome. You know. Folks, yeah. if you could only see this room, they you would, will. Uh, oh, they will. Yeah, watch it on YouTube for those. Yeah, but listening. you know, we're like giving them certain angles. Yeah. The whole thing is is a sight. You know, <laughs> well, we've done this podcast. It's been a sort of a very like you know fly by the seat of our pants yeah. thing. You know, fifty episodes. Fifty. Yeah. Almost. Oh, so that's why you're really? so chill. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fifty episodes, well, and we've done it three and a half months, something yeah. like that. Like with like. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wow. You've done fifty of these in three and a half months. Yeah, two yeah. two episodes a week. And uh, and I'm getting ready to go on, a, you know, it's like I said, a six week tour, and he we needed enough episodes to keep go- to keep the pace up because this guy's Damn. a real taskmaster. Well, man, well, yeah. I gotta tell you, yeah. I'm not blowing smoke, man. You're good at this. Thank you. <laughs> because I mean, I gotta tell you, you know, when we were talking when yeah. we first started, yeah, I was like, 
oh god this is really fucked because this is already going really good like the first three minutes yeah and we're not even fucking recording what are these guys right. doing right because like this is this should be the podcast yeah and then you're like to him, yeah, this you're is like good. are we recording he's like oh yeah we been recording i'm like oh so they actually have a thing yeah we know what we're doing no but i mean <laughs> no, like kinda, a lot kinda. of people no but i mean like a lot of people. people who know what they're doing right don't yeah because it's like i often feel like i'm like in these yeah. things, for some reason, I don't know yeah. why, but in these things, I people often get feel uncomfortable. Real, I feel really like I could I be in front of 100 people. I'm fine doing yeah. this, but you right. know, I, I mean, and and this has been like casual. Yeah, so. it's it's. Have some, you spiked our coffee? Is that it? Are yeah. we really on simulation it's fu- acid? It's funny, but like <laughs> we, we were there was a uh, Josh Radner, an actor. He was in How I Met Your Mother, and he actually does theater stuff, and he's a very creative guy. And we had him on the podcast. And about halfway through, he le- legit thought he, that we drugged his drink. He legit, oh, yeah, yeah. he legit was like, there was a moment where it was like, hey, I'm was... feeling high all of a sudden. Is there something? Did you? And then we made a joke that we put something in his drink, and we were obviously <laughs> kidding. Right. You know, that like, is very funny. But then he wow. was, there, was a li- there was a moment of hesitation. Well, we also that is funny. deep into psychedelics, and he felt he drifted from Yeah, it That is hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, wow. but I, think, I, don't know, I don't know why that is. Yeah, interview is like a lot of uncomfortable vibes, I think. Uh, I think people it, want to like hit certain yeah, points. Yeah, they have too they, much of an agenda or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think that's it. Do you ask the same exact questions oh, to not, everybody? Yeah, yeah. like you're you you like doing Heidi when he's talking to people. <laughs> yeah, <too>. yeah. <laughs> so how do you spell <laughs> Heidi <laughs> to Josh Radner? People are like completely like, what the fuck? It that's felt, why they think they're on acid. Yeah, it felt yeah. very personal. <laughs> Yeah. 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 No, we're we're happy that you guys came and yeah. this worked out. Yeah, I can't wait cool. to come and see another show now that I've gotten a chance to talk to you. Well, all. we're around, man. Where can we're around. Yeah, I'm gonna find yeah. you online. Yeah. Uh, what is the fucking uh, what is Stew it? in the Negro Problem dot com? Stew in the Negro Problem dot com. I think. Yeah. I guess so. Uh, what's, we, your I also media, have a, what's your social media? You don't even know. <laughs> what's my? It's S- we got a S- Facebook S-T-N-P, page, right? S-T-N-P S-T-N-P is, See, I don't think it's STNP. Um, I thought it was the whole thing. Doing the Negro problem. Hey, you're right. You're, you're, not, you're not good at You're not good at social media. It's either you're Stu. right. <laughs> just look up Stu and the Negro problem. I was like, oh, he's being humble. No, but you're actually not good at it. No, I suck at it. Look up Stu and the Negro problem on Facebook and on everything, and you'll find something. And y'all need to go see him because it is something special. Oh, Joe's Pub. Yeah, Joe's Pub, longer? we will be there for possibly until June of next year. Okay, wow. I'm Once come. a month, first week of uh, every month, Either November Monday. November 4th, we mm-hmm. will be there, 7 p.m. November 4th, and um, 7 p.m. December 3rd. It's yeah. like either a Monday or a Tuesday every month. That's awesome. Yeah. And what do you do between for a month? Not you just rehearse teach or <laughs> yeah, everything teach we just talked about right for the last two hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where were yeah. you? I'm just kidding. But we, but you know what else I want to say because yeah. also this is like going to me be me bragging. But you got Entertainment of the Enter, Album of the Year and Entertainment Weekly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Me, me too. Oh my God, that's hilarious! Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. wow, wow. Well, my my album, "Come to Where I'm From," did, yeah, which is the yeah. name of this podcast. Too. Oh, it is yeah. awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, and awesome. around the same time, like there was David Brown, right? Was the writer there? Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God, I haven't thought of that in ages. Yeah, wow. that's a pretty big. Uh, that was a big deal in my world. It was. Wasn't oh, you it kidding? Yours? We milked that shit oh, forever. Yeah, yes. I've been so. milking that. Well, I'm trying to milk it right now again. I'm trying to bring it back in. I'm like, I'm like, let's milk. Wait, wait, I got Stu here. Let's milk this for both of us one more. time. Time. One more time. Let's do this. It's very and, mainstream. You know. it's so mainstream. Right? It's like we gotta so... milk everything we can over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, folks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're legends. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks thank for doing it. A lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Me and Stu don't shake hands enough. Yeah. Well, you know. Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out. Come to where I'm from. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated.